Another AFL tradition, born in 1977, is the singing of a quintessential Australian ballad. Please welcome Australia's finest vocal group, Human Nature. Kangaroos are about to come out. We're going to come out there with them. King comes through. David King. Huge day for them. Their third grand final in four years. that 
1996 Premiership team, in total 17 men who have played in a grand final before. Does it count for anything today? Oh, it does. I mean, uh, having the experience of having been here before certainly gives you the composure when the pressure is hot, but let's not forget there's a few from Carl that have gone through exactly the same thing. Longmire, such a day for him as we've talked about. He would have dreamed about this occasion, this this chance, this one last chance for him on his 200th game. And here's Steve, oh, he already looks proper, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> well, he's going to be an important player, and uh, if they can strap him up and fill him with enough juice just to get him through the hard stuff, um, that'll be a great contribution for the Kangaroos. He had five shots a goal before he went off from 40 metres on Thursday night, Steve. It's kicked two goals, three. Hope that's not an over. <laughs> what about the King, Kerry? Is it his chance today to make his mark as one of the players of the century, in fact? Well, it's probably the jewel that most people will be looking at, Silvani on Carey, uh, the number one fullback in the century and who most players regard as the best player in the current era. 299 games today for John Blakey. Yes, and he may have a major job on Anthony Kudafidis. If Kudafidis doesn't uh, get a tagging role on McKernan and goes with him and he goes into the middle, it will be Johnny Blakey to go on to him. All-Australian Peter Bell. He shouldn't be underestimated, Bell. He, uh, he amasses possessions with great ease. He gets in and under, he can receive, he can kick goals. And I'm tipping someone will get the job to pay uh, very close attention to him today. It's his 100th match. He's played 87 consecutive matches tonight. T today, Dennis Pagan, he's spring cleaning, isn't he? just wants to have a clear view. <laughs> well, the coach's box in the first five minutes must be just the pressure box of all time. Now, the Kangas are out there, as you know, and the Blues are about to come, Christo and Bradley. And the big news, Bruce, is that uh, Ange Christo is going to start on the ground. He was named on the interchange bench, but along with Massey, they are going to start them on the ground. Have a look Play at that. Play angry. Look at that. Play angry, uh, Jared. Maintain the rage. It's been their... Uh, Theme for a couple of weeks now, and if they can just uh, equalise the Kangaroos in their attack on the footy, they may have the big guns to go all the way. And uh, Jared, we talk about emotion within the Kangaroos camp. I think this is an emotion-charged outfit as well. There's been a lot of speculation about the health of the senior coach David Parkin, and, and these boys are ready now to do it for him. Jason, before you uh, you join us today, he makes a huge difference coming back in. He does. One of the great things about Aaron Hamill is it's difficult to match up on. He takes a good pack mark. He's very strong in the air, but he can also play at ground level, and he's quick on the lead. So, you know, again, they could try and use a decoy to draw Martin out of the key post and maybe then uh, get a match up that they prefer with Aaron Hamill up forward. 33 goals this year. That is an important stat for the Blues. And he's That's come good at the right time, but he's in the finals. What about Adrian Hickmark? Could he possibly be fully fit to Jared? Well, it could be, Bruce, depending on the uh, extent of the initial injury, but he is going to start on the interchange bench, and I think having a look at the interchange bench, it tells us something. Both Hogg and Franchino, the two negative players that Carlton have got in their lineup, are going to start there. I think David Parkin is saying, go in, let's take the big hit early, let's get off to a fly. Matthew Allen, so important today in the ruck. He is, he's the All-Australian ruckman. He's done it all year on his own quite often battling two opposition ruckmen. He'll do it again today. He'll take on Matthew Capuano, Corey McKernan at times, and maybe even John Longmire. And for Fraser Brown, his last quarter, you'd love to bottle it last week, Jared. It was just sensational. Yeah, no doubt he'll get a match-up. Uh, it'll be Simpson or Stevens, perhaps, or maybe a rotation of both. But uh, he's got a big part to play in the se this afternoon's outcome, without a shadow of a doubt. As we prepare for another chapter in sporting history, our thoughts with all Australians on peacekeeping duty in East Timor. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please be upstanding for the national anthem to be performed by human nature. Australians, oh, let us rejoice for
That rousing moment that we can't wait for every year. The two teams standing and saluting prior to the grand final. Now, Konji Asumi is a very lucky man today. He won the, toy co the coin toss, and here he is, and he's about to toss the coin with the two captains. Good luck, Wayne. Wayne Konji, I toss this today. Good luck. Just, just show Wayne what. That's uh, okay. that's heads, and the other side is tails. Yep. Wayne, your call. Yep. Okay. Tails. Well, it is. Okay, Wayne's in the way. So, Thank you. So Kerry wins the toss and will kick to the left of screen. So once again, the moment has arrived for the first bounce of a grand final. Alan got his hand on it. Capuano went a bit early. Alan got a second touch, couldn't get a kick away. Little give going forward was by King. Allison went without it. McKay put a man down and I think gave a free kick away at Simpson at centre wing. Mant started full forward for the Blues, but he'd been picked up surprisingly by John Blakey. So Blakey on Manton. Simpson's kicked towards the half for Care. He's got it, has he? No. All over him, Silvani, well done. Rack gets a booming kick away. Manton's held on to. No free kick. Blakey might have been lucky. Yes, he's got it. Manton with a free kick, Blakey was all over him. He's in the heart of the centre square. Kicked the first goal of the prelim final. Wants to give it off, maybe forced to go long. Sits it up, Whitnell's the target. He's pushed it very wide, bad bounce for Whitnell. Sexton getting involved, handball back's okay. Murphy can thump it, leads back, goes towards the goal square. Pickett's getting back there. Pickett, yes, Pickett, yes, Pickett, no. Play handball, play on, and Steve-O gets an early kick. Comes wide to the half-back flank, the race is on now. If it sits nicely, that could be in business, Hamill. But here comes Mickey Martin, charging at him with Bradley, and he gets him. Back again to Harvey. The Kangaroos go surging down towards Silvani and Carey, and it's Silvani who reigns supreme. Great start by the fullback of the century. Silvani short to Murphy. When they last met, Carlton got away to a flying start. The Kangaroos pegged them back and beat them. Pickett tries to storm through. Bradley wants the free kick. Doesn't get it. Brown at the bottom of the pack. And we've got a bounce. Some players today are Andrew Coates, Brett Allen and Scott McLaren. The latter two making their debut in a grand final. We wish them well. Harvey and Camperiali running uh, pretty tightly together. Allen again with Capuano. Brown had it with one hand. Stevens down there as well. It's locked up. In fact, uh, just a quick change is Ben Nelson now going with uh, Harvey and, well, he's had a pretty good start to the game. So the bounce of the ball just forward of the setter, favouring the Blues. Good bounce too. Matthew Allen's had his hands on the football a couple of times already. Attempted hack out of there and the Blues in and under. Not allowing any kangaroo to get a clear possession so far. Very important that every kick early in the game is well earned. And just a couple of boys there, Martin Pike and Brett Ratton having a bit of a to-do as they get to their feet. And some uh, negative in and under work being done by both sides. Preparedness now to put enormous physical pressure on their opponents by both sides. Ratton again, but he's tackled or harassed and taken to the ground. Shannon Grant, one of the Kangaroos players, and for the third time it will be bounced in much the same area of the ground. Sun breaking through here. Packed house, 95,000 people, Capuano and Alan Bell, Ratton onto him, Bell's handball, not great. He put uh, King under pressure, but he did very well, King. Only as far as Capuano really takes a clever mark at centre wing. Key player. Looks for Hamill. That's the way he's going. King gets back courageously. Oh, well Terrific stuff. Martin under the pump. King again. Belts it forward. Murphy getting his hands on it early. He's a good kick normally. Oh. Well done, David King, who's had a wonderful couple of minutes here. And it'll be a boundary throw in at half forward right. That's a brilliant passage of play from David King. But first and foremost, the kick to Hamill looked to be a good one, but he backed in. He knew he was going to get cleaned up. He kept his eye on the ball. He attacked it. And then to follow up with the smother was fantastic. There it is in replay. The courage initially of King. We never doubt that. 
Harvey's got a free kick for a shove, and he's going to take it on centre wing. No score is yet to either side. Harvey to King. He's on centre wing, and Bradley may have given away a free kick down the ground. The advantage is going to be paid to Simpson. The door opening now for the Kangaroos. In towards Carey and Silvani and Co. Dean Rice lurking there at the back, but he was unable to take it cleanly. Shaw on all fours. Back to Carey. Carey around the body. It's high. Bouncing in towards full forward. Off the chest it comes. And the first score of the day is a behind to the Kangaroos. It's been a great opening few minutes, but one of the most pleasing things is we've got all the matchups that we were hoping for. No surprises pulled by the coaches. They're letting their good players go head to head. Gee, a tight five minutes. Just the one behind on the board. Martin uses the body. It's not good enough. A punt up. Aaron Hamill has got it on centre wing. Whitnell screaming for it down on right half board. But he elects to go inboard, and that's clever. Camparelli's got plenty of room. He steadies. The pass has got to be good for Lappin. It's out in front of him now. Pickett is a terrier. It's over the line. We've got a throw in. Carlton attacking in their left forward pocket. Down by behind. Those passes that come in from players like Camparelli have got to have just a little bit more precision on them. That was a real chance for the Blues. Lappin had a couple of metres start on Pickett, and the kick missed its target. The boundary throw in. Whitnell doing the ruck work. Lappin tries to get it out. Ooh. Now a chance for Brown, left foot snap by Brown, bounces through for a behind. So a rush behind to the Kangaroos, a shot at goal with the left foot by Fraser Brown has levelled the scores, just a point apiece, and we're five and a half minutes into the grand final of 1999. And now that it has settled down, there's been a couple of rotations. Uh, Shannon Grant is being picked up by Nelson. McKay's picking up Abraham, Stevens running with Camparelli and Simpson, a big job on Murphy. King to himself, and then a dangerous kick. Doesn't quite get it outside 50. Rattons with a real charge. Lines him up, goes for it, and is going to kick the first goal. Brett Ratton. <laughs> well, David King will be disappointed. The little one to himself, and then the kick lacked the penetration. It was a 50-50 ball, and the Blues have won it. What a great start for Carlton. And Brett Ratton, he's kicked a few important goals in the last few weeks. He just got himself in a bit of a hole, David King. He had nowhere to go. The long kick didn't appear to be on, so he tried to chip it to Stevens. He had a two-on-one contest against Carlton, and when it broke free, off almost one step, Brett Ratton finished beautifully, and look at the excitement. They are pumped the Blues. Brett Ratton is an experienced finals campaigner. 14 finals, and he's got the first goal of the day. Carlton leading by one straight kick. And an infringement within the square. It's going the way of Carlton again. Yeah, it looked like Winston Abraham actually way, way too early into the centre square. Thank you, Ozzy. So it'll be Allen to take the free kick from the middle. Away, he gives it to Bradley. They've made a positive start. Whitnell at the back, couldn't take it. Martin hopes to tie it out, but misses. Here's Lappin. Lappin for the free Navy kick. Blues. Free kick. And it's going to come back amidst all the excitement of the blue and white going up as one. Back it comes. And up by Brent Allen, the 33-year-old gardener officiating in his first grand final, takes charge. Archer ambles out of the back line. Almost comes to a halt. And again, he's put his teammates under pressure because they're going to be beaten by numbers. Christou to left half forward. Pick at the flyer from behind. Waiting down, and there's going to be a free kick picked up. Going the way of Carlton, Murphy wanted to go on with it. It's going to come back to Aaron Hamill. I'll tell you what, Camparelli is really working Stevens about. He's uh, running deep in the forward line, trying to really push him on that bad ankle of his. Let's test it out in the first 10 minutes. This is Hamill. The Blues are playing much more fluent football. Dangerous times here for the Kangaroos. Spearing a pass beautifully onto the chest of Simon Beaumont. He was a wild card, Sandy, wasn't he, in our uh, preview? Yep. And uh, a pretty good wild card. I mean, a lot of people would have seen his performance in half a game against the Magpies earlier in this season. Been very good, Beaumont, all year. Hasn't missed a game, and he's got a chance to kick his first in this grand final, but he goes across the face. Lappin was one of the flyers, as he loves to do. And we've added one behind to the Carlton scoreline. One, Shandy, two. Shandy, we've normally got a very swirly wind down here at the MCG. Today, just perfect conditions and just a very light breeze. Short kick in has been marked by Blakey. Still well entrenched into his, to his defensive 50. Yeah, and Johnny Blake will be pushing it down to McKernan, who has come from full forward to give a tall marking target. Blues a chance here. Rice collected the hand pass, delivered beautifully to Brown. Outside 50. 
Camparelli making position further in towards the left forward pocket, ignored Brown. A wry smile on the face of the tough midfielder for the Blues, Fraser Brown. He'll kick from outside 50. He lobs it to the front of the square. A marking contest. Wes Lappin, he was at the base of the pack. Now he's tackling Pickett. Try to force it alive. Pickett tackled again. Still Pickett. Still Pickett. Oh, and didn't he show magnificent composure. Gives Anthony Stevens his rear, first real touch of the footy. Gets the ball down to centre wing. And Silvani to play the percentages. And push it away from Carey over for a boundary throw-in. Well, Silvani is as good a one-on-one -on -one body player as uh, this game has ever seen. And for Wayne Carey to dominate, he's got to be able to find some space and not get uh, trapped in with the mauler. Ruck's a bit caught out here. Shannon Grant, little kick towards centre wing. Rice attacking hard. Silvani, good start for him. Good defeat ease. Delivers to half forward. Lappin, pick it started pretty well. Ratten to Lappin. Good handball skills to Hamill. Hamill's kick is a good one to Mantle or Whitnell. Mantle's at the back well play Blakey. Whitnell put it on the ground. Should have been Peyton holding the ball. Wasn't. That was stiff to Kangaroos. Up and over it is Pike and Whitnell. It'll be a ball up. Looked holding the ball. The Kangaroos just can't continue to uh, rely on their full back line. They are under the pump at the moment, and uh, the dike will break unless they get some sort of uh, relief from uh, the midfield of the Kangaroos getting some possession. King held up. Allen and Brown. Little squeezy one by Archer. Almost a centre wing. Harvey with a bit of pace. Back to Stevens. Ooh. Stevens still getting plenty of kicks despite the ankle to Grant. Grant now on the burst. He wants uh, McKernan at centre half forward. The ball comes on the back. Mooney versus Sexton. Sexton has to make it sit for him. He works at Kudafidis with a hip and shoulder was good. Sexton's away for the Blues to Murphy out wide. Ball bounces in. Boundary throw in. Matthew Hogg playing his final game for Carlton, awaiting his chance on the sidelines. An excellent start by Carlton. Free kick against the Blues there. Good decision, just pushing in the ruck instead of going for the ball. Shoulder take it. Going to half forward. Silvani, an effective spoil out the back. Sexton gets a hurry kick. Lumbering towards it. Initially, Capuano needs support. Eventually finds Pickett, but he's under the pump. He goes back to Capuano. Can they get out of this one? Another one to Pickett. He's had an excellent start to the game, Pickett. He bounces his way up towards half forward. Puts them inside 50. Down towards Kelly. Oh. <laughs> this is going to be one of the best contests you'll ever see in the grand final, Silvani on Kerry. Silvani started very well. He called it long. He wanted the long kick. He put the hand up because the sun came out. Then he just held Silvani in front of him. He timed the push off to perfection and took what looked to be a relatively comfortable mark in the end, but I can guarantee you that's no easy feat, that mark there by Wayne Carey. Carey, 207 games. Silvani, 272. Carey, 74 goals so far this season. Directly in front. 25 metres out. And the Kangaroos are on the board. Carey has the first. Well, this is just promising to be everything we hoped for this match. We were worried uh, for a large part of the week about the Carlton forward line, but they've put the Kangaroos' defence under tremendous pressure. They've struggled a little bit up forward early, the Kangaroos, but this time a one-on-one -on -one out to uh, Carey and Silvani. The long kick from Byron Pickett, who's had a sensational first 10 or 12 minutes, and that's just uh, superior strength, beautiful judgment, and the goal that the Kangaroos needed to get started. Well, just before we went to the break, Mooney has gone to the bench to be replaced by Welsh. So already Dennis Pagan, not happy with that uh, forward line set up. Nelson, gang tackled by the Kangaroos, and the ball be bounced once again. I think it's an important move, Robbo, because if you have a look at uh, the three individual matchups, McKernan and Cuda, Kerry and Silvani, Sexton and Mooney, they need to take the ball overhead and take marks because at ground level, each of the Carlton players are more mobile. The bounce. Very well gathered by Brown. Kicks across his left shoulder. Opportunity here for Abraham. He's swapped by McKay. Absolutely. McKay looking for the free kick. Look at the Carlton forwards. They're working extremely hard. Bradley beaten on this occasion. Ball flipped out the back. Abraham, good vision. Kick forward by Simpson to within 45 metres. That's a free kick. No, no pause. Let play go on. Chris Du. Grant. Grant. Still shooting Grant. Oh. This is just hot, this opening 40. 
That is a brilliant piece of play by Shannon Grant. It looked like there might have been a free kick given by Corey McKernan, but I think in the end he was worried about jumping into the back of Wayne Carey, and he, he half pulled out of the leap when it spilled free. As we see, no one really affected by that. A good tackle first by Shannon Grant. He kept his balance. He rode the half tackle from Ange Christou, and G threaded the needle with the kick. No substitute for skill, but a couple of unsung heroes in that passage of play on half back. I think Mick Martin and Brent Harvey did particularly well when they were outnumbered. Harvey outstanding. Three against him, weren't they? Grant, brilliant goal. He's played in two grand finals yet to play in a premiership. He's had a splendid start with that kick. So the Kangaroos in front. Allen gets over Capuano, Ratton to Brown. Free kick coming back to Ratton in the centre. Two one to one. Caporelli by himself. He's really working. Stevens over. He's got him. Thanks, Dipper. Okay. Caporelli between centre wing and half forward. So the Blues have had most of it. Trial by five points. Good signs for the Kangas. Goes short to the pocket for Lappin. Got him. He was in the St Kilda team a couple of years ago when the Crows ran over the top of them. He'll kick from uh, just outside 50. They kicked some remarkable goals last week at this end in the final term. This would take a very big kick. He's given it all he's got. It won't be a goal. Front of the square job. Hamill went early and building it through for the Kangaroos was Capuano. So it's a behind of the Blues. They're 1-3. And North are 2-1. John Longmire awaits his opportunity. It's been a long wait. This is his 200th game. Missing out. 96 and 98, we welcome him to a grand final. And they'd be a little bit nervous here. The last, well, the two goals that Carlton have kicked have come from returns from the point post kick -outs. Abraham was a target. At the back is Bell. Gives a little ground. They get clear. Pick it. Onto the Great left foot. Kick. Magnificent for Shannon Grant. If it sits, he's away. Rice gives chase. Grant's got to be quick. He is. Oh. Beautiful kick again. If that was meant to hit Craig Scholl, that pass is one of the best I've ever seen because he was being tackled, he had to kick it across his body at the time. I don't know if it was fortuitous or not, but certainly uh, has created a chance for Craig Scholl. He's got the benefit of the doubt, Jason. Jeez, he's a fair roost. Oh, that's more than a fair roost. That is a wonderful goal. Craig Scholl gets his first. The Kangaroos, after watching Carlton boot the first, have kicked the last three. And already it looks like Nelson's coming off and Franchina coming on. They're worried about the uh, the forward setup of the Kangaroos. And hasn't Shannon Grant had an influence so far? He just kicked an incredible goal. Now he's set one up with a great piece of play. And that is a magnificent kick for Craig Scholl. Well, that's Nelson warming the bench. His place on the field has been taken by Franchina. The Blues getting a fair bit of those uh, centre bounce clearances. Pike did well to stand his ground there and hold up the rampaging Blues from the midfield. And the umpire will bounce just forward of the uh, centre circle, favouring Carlton. Yeah, they're not getting a lot of flow directly from the centre of the Kangaroos. Most of it coming off half back, but uh, Shannon Grant has chopped them up so much that Franchina is now his new opponent. Murphy's kick slews off the side of his boot. Manton does well to get his hands on it and then lock it up for the Blues just inside their forward 50. And to try and break that up, uh, Jared Shannon Grant picking up uh, Scott Camparelli. But now uh, Franchine has run forward to the square and he's all on his own, but David King's getting back as we speak. Bounce of the ball about 45 metres from the Carlton goal. They kick the first goal, so the Kangaroos have kicked the last three. Ratton tries to get it to Camparelli. A little kick by Camparelli. Nearly taken by Franchina. With the way pass. Blocked by Pickett. Well done, Archer, to get in there and give him a bit of a hand. The awkward bouncing ball. Lands with Murphy. Goes back to and finds Manton. Manton wider still. Murphy heading in as he got some space. He squeezes a high kick. It'll land close to the square. Lampard. Lampard, is he back paid? No, he hasn't. The man in front stood his ground manfully. It was Matthew Capuano. And he's been paid the mark. Probably got leap, first touch a in. Not a bad leap, but a little bit like trying to take a hanger over a ruck, but probably better to punch it forward into the hot spot. Remember round one, Jason, when we were here when he took the mark of the leap to the central. How good to pick it's defense. Oh, he just has a knack of getting his hand late into a contest to score what looks like a great set up move. Steve O's playing a big first quarter. Kudafidis gave it to McKay. Good stuff to Bradley. 
Bradley now steadies and goes bang with a high one. Whitnell's the target at the back, but in the front. Good mark again, Capuano. He's been important early, and they're away through Blakey, building it, but not good to Bradley. So the two oldest men on the field, one kicks to the other. Bradley's got a couple of Lucy's, but they're very wide, and he may want to go down the centre. 35 years of age, turns 36 next month. Delivers, but doesn't deliver particularly well. And Capuano takes his third mark in about a minute at centre half back. Been very good. It's one of the key players coming into this game, bearing in mind what he was up against. And that includes Matty Allen, the former ruckman in the competition. The Kangaroos through Blakey out of trouble, combining with Martin. Back towards the middle. McKay couldn't pick it up initially. Now Scholl's got him. And he asks the question. No, says the umpire. Just in the Kangaroos attacking zone. Yeah, Matty Allen now has moved forward, boys, and obviously Cappy one is uh, sticking with him. Grant, Carey and Scholl, the goal kickers for the Kangaroos. Ratton has Carlton's only one. Here's Simpson, been a very good player all season, spiralling a puck down towards the forward line. Christou forced to defend on Welch, and he does it pretty well. Christou started on Scholl, but uh, Sexton's now gone to Scholl. And uh, Christo, as we just saw, has moved on to the more mobile six, uh, Welsh. Thrown in the right forward pocket for the Kangaroos. McKernan plucks it out of the air, tries to get a kick away. It's partly smothered. Harvey taken on by Bradley. They go again, off the boot of Welsh it comes. Welsh goes again. Welsh! Stops by line by this magnificent defender in Stephen Silvani. Just got it lost between his feet, Ange Christo. He would have been horrified when it rolled clear of his feet. He's thinking this could result in an easy goal to the Kangaroos, but Soss was there to save the day. 11 points, the margin. And they're looking at it once again from the Goodyear blimp. Great desperation by Silvani. His captain brings it back into play. So Craig Bradley to direct traffic from the behind. It goes straight down the ground. Ratner's gathered it. Nearly tackled. Well tackled by Hart from the behind. McKernan kicks the ball directly towards goal. Getting back is Bradley and he marks right on the goal line. Quickly hand passes it on. Missed his targeting Chris Do. Over the top to Silvani. They've combined pretty well the Blues from the full back line. Murphy who kicks the ball beautifully normally. Out in the direction of Lappin. Pick it. Still pick it. Brown helping out as Capuano off the edge. Smothered off the boot. Forces a boundary throw in. Just forward of centre wing favouring the Blues. He's just brilliant, brilliant Byron Pickett. I mean, he just went up with the left hand, but then he recovers his balance very quickly and he's first to get to the loose ball. There's been a lot of good players early in the match, but none more important than him. You haven't seen a better handball in the game uh, until you saw that run from Ratton. It was a beauty. And the mark has been taken by Manton. Manton looking to move on. Gives the hand pass back. This is Camparelli. Camparelli in towards half well, forward. Yeah. Not a bad pass, but desperate play. Tremendous football by Welsh. He knew the player was coming from the opposite side, but he stood his ground and Mark at centre-half back. High flyer out there, McKay. Ball spills to the back. Two defeaties, dispossessed. Franchina, Bradley falls over. Back to Franchina. Franchina with the left. The mark, yes, it's been paid to Simpson. It's all happening for the Kangaroos. Simpson's oh, kick, though, that's cut off by Kudafidis. Carlton half-back line standing up pretty well. Kudafidis kicks a beauty to Allen. They can stroll on now. This is the important kick. Can he find Witten? Oh, he didn't take the mark. Pressure coming from Archer. Martin Tambor to Pike. Pike goes for the line and finds it. Well, he's not going to get many better chances than that to get into the game early. Lance Whitnell is a might have spun perfectly as a drop punt, but the kick from Matthew Allen was a pretty good one. And even though Archer was applying pressure from behind, he should have taken the chest mark and lined up from about 40 metres out. Blues need a goal here. Ratton doing very well to Brown. Brown can't quite break through. Pickett puts the pressure on him. Hamill under the gun, drops it. Gets rid of it in the end. Back to Ratton. Ratton doesn't have time to look out. Belts it forward. Whitnell's timed it badly. Beaumont's a left footer. Can Pike get to him? Can Beaumont get to the footy? It spills out. Kangaroos. Blakey did pretty well. Wants the line. Franchina going hard. Steve O going hard. What a player he is, Stevens. What a footballer he is. He built it forward. It's all Blues, though. And McKay getting back with some time. Back to Silvani. He stretches Silvani. Silvani's handball. Christo and McKay. McKay doing well. Just shrugs off an opponent. Built 
shots at the half board. Whitnell can't quite clear the attempt there, not pay. Comes back to Camparelli, hooks it back to the goal square. Merrington didn't take the mark, used his body. Hamill, Hamill, they're hanging on to him. Hamill can't get rid of it. Archer, gang tackle, good footy. This what a great. passage of play. Unbelievable. Well, I'll tell you what, there has been a few questions asked of the Kangaroos defence early, but they've stood up. They have answered the challenge beautifully. This is just incredible football at the moment. The pressure that's out there is unbelievable. It just went up about 10 degrees in the last 60 seconds. Fantastic stuff. Here's Blakey. Hurriedly, Capuano's got to beat a couple, including Allen. Who it does it nicely. Gets it away to David King. The dashing David King. This is his trademark. Away he goes. Oh, Through half back. Was on. In towards half forward. Now he's going to require something from Carey or Motlop. Carey is there. Silvani over the top. And there will be a free kick down the line. I'm not quite sure who the Kangaroos player was, but David King, all he had to do was chip the handball over the top and they were away. McKay gave it to Rice to put him under the pump. Now Bradley's got to take a good it. mark. And he does. Very important that he took that in front of Harvey with just over a minute remaining in this first quarter. The umpires have been a bit harsh on the Kangaroos. There's been a number of tackles, in particular one of from Ballon Rat, where he, he took the chance, he had prior opportunity and didn't uh, dispose of it correctly, but they haven't been getting the free kicks. Bradley going across the centre, straight down the ground towards Hamill. At the back is Grant. Tidies up with a hand pass to Capuano. There's been a whistle. The advantage is going to be paid. So play goes on to the outer side. Motlop's got to beat a couple as Chris do intercepts. Stolen by Scholl. And away he goes. Can they score before the siren? Kerry! You can just see him, he had the run, Silvani couldn't get there in time, he was a little bit shielded by the contest and the lunging arm from Kudafidis couldn't make contact with it and haven't we seen him take a heap of those and he's going to kick from about 53 out, if there's any breeze assistance it's probably behind him so you would think that he's probably going to make the distance from here. Came into this game with 50 goals to his name in finals, oh. he's already got one. He had a great lead from Brent Harvey that he knocked back so he must be confident about the distance. Kicking from 55 metres. Just floating it across the face and it's smashed through from behind. And that will be the last score of the quarter. I think one of the most important midfield moves has been Shannon Grant onto Scott Camparelli. Camparelli dominant uh, early in this match, but uh, he's been quite down by uh, Grant. Grant's had so, so much effect himself. And it's also allowed Anthony Stevens to get into the game as well. Just a couple of seconds left. Bradley doesn't want a McKernan mark at this stage. He doesn't get it. It's quarter time. A fierce, fast and ferocious opening. Just what you'd expect on grand final day here at the MCG. Yes, a big start. Carey and Silvani, key match-up early. It has. I mean, Silvani probably dominated the first 10 minutes, but uh, Carey exerting his influence in the latter part of that quarter. Well, David Parkin talked about the stress of grand final week and on the day, and you can see it there on his face. At quarter time, it's the Kangaroos. They're 3-3-21 to Carlton 1-3-9. The game is just in the balance now. It could be blown out in the next 15 minutes if Carlton don't get back into it. Start of the second term here, Capuano. Got over Allen, Brown trapped oh. it very cleverly. Handball was a beauty. Out wide to Murphy. Murphy's long bong to fall forward. Whitnell was at the back, was waiting. Manton chases hard. Ball still to be won. Manton, can he get it down to Bradley? Bradley going the wrong way. Handball okay to Allen. Allen's got two men loose. Decides to go long. Beaumont's at the back and Brown. And Brown's marked it. They had the numbers. Archer says there should have been a free kick for Jeopardy. But the Blues had both Brown and Beaumont lurking, and Brown took the mark. Gee, you wonder how, how so many Carlton players got free. They had a four-on-one contest at the end. You can see them, and there's a couple to the right of screen that you just you just miss in the picture there. But they were everywhere, the Blues running forward. So Brown, who kicked two goals last week, including that very famous one in the last quarter, has kicked only four goals this season. He's kicked another one. He's kicked another one. the start the Blues wanted. It's a very important play for the Blues, Fraser Brown. Both he and Brent Ratton, as well as uh, we know how good they are in the centre square and at picking up possessions, but they've both been goal kickers in recent weeks and they certainly need them to do it again. Fraser Brown hasn't let them down. Matty Allen, a good kick forward. He knew they had the numbers. He had to drive it long. You can see that Matthew Lappin and also Simon Beaumont over the back were both loose.
Great start for Carlton. They could have rappled that ball. It was delivered by Matthew Allen. Probably four of them down there unchecked. Pagan would not be happy. And he started the play phrase of round two by getting the handball out of yep. the centre bounce. Let's see what happens this time. Allen floats over the top. Stevens kick. Forced away to the left. Fine mark by Simpson. Adam Simpson from centre wing. The Kangaroos looking for a reply. Big pack of players with Scholl in the middle. Shannon Grant waiting down in front. Had a good first half. Sensational stunner. That was the KO Murphy now. Dean Rice. Fantastic work by Dean Rice. Thanks, Jason. Back towards centre wing. And Pike takes the mark. Well, we've seen a couple of absolute gems so far. Not only a smother, he nearly marked it off the boot. <laughs> Kick up towards Great half kick. forward. Scholl again in front. Gee, uh, the Kangaroos could consider themselves a little unlucky as far as some free kicks are concerned. The Simpson one has been marked by Sexton. And have a look at this again from Dean Rice. Oh, that's Just brilliant. sensational. There's a chance work. for the Blues here, Camparelli. Bradley. Scott Camparelli's on centre wing. Ambles towards that position. Kicks to half board over the head of Manton. He needs support. Beaumont ripped over the boundary line. Blakey got a hand to it, but then's got to go again. Good smother. And we'll have a throw in. I tell you what, I think the Sun's playing a little bit of a part out there now too. That kick that yeah. came in, a few of them turned around, they weren't quite sure where it was. They may be, well, a few of them might have difficulty when that's, uh, the ball comes in from that particular angle. Good work by Archer. Throw in again. Straight down the front to Stevens. Hurriedly gets boot to ball. And that's OK. The mark is taken by Peter Bell. Bell gets the hand pass away. King, a slip little hand pass to Simpson. He slips as he went to kick the ball. Rice held by the jumper the umpire right on the scene has awarded the free kick to Dean Rice. He's wide of centre half back, not quite up to the centre. He goes very wide, looks for and finds Hamill. Did he take the mark? He's up, into his back was Simpson. Ball went free, Brown. Now the umpire's found a free kick and it looks as it'll go back to Hamill between wing and right half forward. Let's have a look at this one. Big push there from Kuna on Corey McKuna. Umpire right beside him, had to be played. Hamill has the ball. The Kangaroos lead by a goal. They've kicked 3-3. Carlton have kicked 2-3. Early part of the second quarter. Hamill's kick. He looked for Allen. Ball spilt. McKay didn't even attempt to kick the ball. Should have been penalised. Pachi was lucky there, Andrew McKay, because he fell on top of the football. And the umpire will bounce at centre-half forward for the Blues, and Richard Osborne has the bench for the Blues. Yes, right. Chris Massey, Adrian Hickmont, who's about to come on, Ben Nelson and Matthew Hogg. Ratton gets it. Another possession. Kicks to full forward. Pike with pace. Great play. Peter Bell's been moved off uh, Ratton, who is dominating. He's now uh, trying to take Bradley out of the play. Pike to half-back. Gets good distance. Oh, Bradley went very early, but Welsh has got it. A little high one on the boots, effective. The Simpson has had plenty of it. They're away to Stevens. Stevens kicks to centre half forward. Silvani should mark it. He's got it. It's a poor kick by Steve O coming in. Goes back to Bradley, getting plenty of it. To Ratton finds him good mark. Blues having a very good patch here. Low kick to Lap and half volley was good. To Sexton. Kick, 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 kick. He's 50 out. Lines him up. Wobbling, wobbling, wobbling the wrong way. A behind. Terrific build up by the Blues. They're starting to look ominous. 21 plays 16. Who's on the bench for the Kangaroos, Dibba? We have Mooney, Clayton, Allison, and John Longmire. Adrian Hickmont warming up on the sidelines. Started the day with that leg heavily strapped. Of course, he's had hamstring problems, so the strapping has been removed. Fraser Brown in trouble, boys. Just keep an eye on him. Okay, well, Hickmont's still warming up. We could be seeing him soon. We keep an eye on Fraser Brown. Oh, Pick no. Up. You could see from the position they're in, you could see what uh, Byron Pickett was trying to do. He was looking for Winston Abraham as we see Fraser Brown come off, and that'll be a blow for the Blues. But basically, he's tried to drill a 45 metre pass head high off one step, and he just can't do that. Double change, Manton off as well. Hickmont has a run, and so too does Matthew Hogg. How costly is that kick out going to prove? We'll find out right now. Camparelli from 50 metres. Lovely looking kick. Costly one, wasn't it? From Pickett. Well, at the highest level you get punished for your mistakes and that's what happens. 
Both teams have had a little bit of trouble with their kickouts today. The zone working very well, particularly on this instance for the Blues. And he was looking for a long, penetrating kick to Winston Abraham, who will come in from the left. But he just didn't get enough purchase on the ball. Mark 45 out directly in front. And Scott Camparelli punishes him for the error. going on between Matthew Hogg and Brent Harvey. Gee, the Blues midfielders Ratton 6 and 5, Cabarelli 8, Murphy 8 and 1. Some bad body language signs here for the Kangaroos. There's a number of them with their heads down in defence. Matthew Allen dominating the centre bounces. The ball oh. spills. Chance for Hickmott. Knocks it forward. Makeda Murphy. Murphy with his ninth kick. Goes yeah, towards the goal square and misses. As a matter of fact, just sneaks it through for a behind. Robbo, face it has left the ground. He's going up the, up the race now. Uh, looks like his AC joint. They're going to uh, tape his shoulder up and get him back on the ground as soon as possible. Well, it looked as though he, uh, he got off the ground quite nicely with uh, by running off. So, obviously, Dipper, you could be spot on there. And the kick in has been taken by Shannon Grant. Still the Blues a chance. Their forwards working over time. Camparelli dispossessed. Bell, now Simpson, squeezes the kick in the direction of Carey. Couldn't take the mark. Silvani tries to get the hand pass away. McKernan struggling to get into the game. Kudafidis looks for Silvani. A lovely little hand pass, if you'd want to call it that. Franchina into the pocket and making his ground and being awarded the mark was Hamill. He's too far out to score, you would think. The player on the mark is about 60 metres from goal. Stevens. Still looks as though he's favouring that uh, ankle injury. Short kick, Ratton covering some territory. And look Fantastic at by himself. midfield leader, Brett Ratton. The heart and soul of Carlton, Brett Ratton. And he's going to shoot for goal from about 40 metres. It'll be have to be a fantastic kick. He's right against the boundary line. Bathed in sunshine now, the Melbourne cricket ground. Gee. He bombs away to the square. It's oh. still alive! to 3-3, three, three. Allen getting on top, they're winning the centre square, Harvey's little kick to half four, they need a goal here, McKernan, he must impose himself on the match, Shoal goes, McKernan loads it up and gives it a run, no. kicks the goal, you're joking, That's imposing yourself, <laughs> that's the answer, well what a major play from one of the big players on the game. I'll tell you what, Cooter's done a pretty good job on him to date, but uh, it was a fortunate kick that just dropped short. He took the chest mark. I thought he was too far out. And, Jared, you don't see too many kicks like that, do you? No, this is a, an adrenaline-boosted goal, uh, Jason, without any question. But the important aspect was that the Kangaroos, for one of the few times in this match, won a ball from the middle of the ground. Allen won the tap, but it was the Kangaroos who took it forward. Thumping kick. Going all the way. Shane Clayton coming on for the first time. Harvey's gone off the, the Kangaroos. And Steve O's in a bit of trouble. Uh, the Gothers was with him uh, the last two or three minutes. Keep an eye on Steve O. It's not his ankle, it's his elbow, left elbow. What a way to stop the run. Thumping goal by Corey McKernan. Bell out of the centre for the Kangaroos, but standing his ground is Dean Rice. So far has given us one of the smothers of the day. He goes to the outer side and Andy McKay. McKay is clear and he's got Bradley, but beautiful interception by David King. Oh, all the way. Here goes King. All the way. All the way, they say. He bounces his way through the centre. Oh, he goes all the way. He's beaten Murphy. 60 metres out. He's tired when he takes the kick. It wobbles towards Carey. Smashed towards Rice. He couldn't take it. Christie tries to soccer up the ground. Ange goes again. Pokes it wide. Francina leads in the race. Allison on his hammer. Taken towards the line. Kept in by Carey. An excellent chance for the Ruse. Simpson goes with a high kick in towards goal. Oh, they need a mark, and McKernan has done it again. What a goal. 
Street are in trouble, boys. He's, he's calling for the doctors. He's, he's coming off. Well, there's some irony in all of this. Stevens coming off with an elbow injury. What a mark for Kern. Oh, this is just... Well, it was an unbelievable fight. A couple of passage, uh, passages of play. I mean, the run from David King... I think by the time he got to 58, he didn't have the energy to I kick know. the ball 50 metres. It was a bit of a wobbler. In the end, the Silvani handball came out and the high kick into a one-on-one -on -one contest. And this is what we want to see. One-on-one, -on -one, McKernan on Kudafidis. Check side. Oh, got it. Check side goal. Oh, this has got everything. What a way to finish it. In the space of two minutes, he's kicked two of the most spectacular goals you will ever see. But just before that, uh, Jason, you probably would have been looking for Corey McKernan because he'd only had two kicks. He'd been very The game quiet. was well and truly into the second term. Well, he stood up last week and it looks like he's doing the same now. He boomed one from about 70 out. This time he took a mark, a great mark, one-on-one. -on -one. He just used his superior strength on Anthony Kudafidis to push him off. And the finish with the check side was deadly. So Anthony Stevens, gee, that's a, a bit of a blow for the Kangaroos. They took a punt on his ankle injury, but he's come off the ground with an arm injury. Ratting in and under. Bell, the tackler for the Kangaroos. The yeah, Robo will bounce. Yeah, Robo, it looks like a torn uh, bicep in his left arm there. Well, that may see him out of the match for the, uh, for the rest of the day. And this is a real problem. They took a punt by not, uh, I think, selecting Robert Scott. On the bench now, they've got uh, Motlop, Longmire, Stevens, who's injured, and Mooney. There's not a lot of run left for the Kangaroos, and uh, with the Blues so dominant in that area, that uh, could be a telling sign. Motlop is one that could go onto the ball, but he's more of a forward pocket. He's not used to running through the lines in the middle of the ground. Uh, double change here, but one is uh, the blood rule, I think, with Brett Ratton. Yeah, he's just a scratch on his uh, calf. Ben Nelson, the other one, on to Beaumont. Gee, no wonder you need uh, two or three assistants in the coach's box, Jared, to keep an eye on all these matchups. They just go on and off the ground like uh, as fast as you can move your eyes. Yeah, there's, uh, there's folks uh, down there with whiteboards for each and every one of those aspects of it. So the bounce in the middle, Martin trying to break away. Yeah, we've got a whiteboard down here as well too, boys. I know Barry Mitchell uh, for the Blues has the whiteboard for the kickouts for the zones, looking for the player that's vulnerable looking for the hole and right at the moment they're getting it right the blues got to get ratten back on the ground for a chance to break clear here Hammer tackle. tackle good tackle from behind bell quickly onto it that's where he's got to be picking up the crumbs Beautiful Left foot kick. kick is all right allison couldn't take the mark there for the blues is allen must give the hand pass away does to murphy murphy's given away about 30 meters this has to be with precision oh well done chris do and murphy the kick Ooh. goes out wide, Lappin and Pickett, oh, yes. and Pickett from behind has taken the mark. He had to go short to the pain in that instance. He's on centre wing, he kicks the ball in towards half forward. The Kangaroos in front, and the mark has been taken at centre half forward by Matthew Capuano. Number is on Abraham, he's by himself. Capuano in front, he's a big tall boy. Pretty hard to get around when he had that posse. Matthew Allen a little bit late on the scene. Capuano to kick from 50 metres. He's got McKernan, one out. The Blues inside their forward 56 times in this term. The Kangaroos three. McKernan just pulls the kick ever so slightly. Not McKernan, Capuano. Mark. mark has been taken by Welsh oh. in the bell square. Will kick a goal for the Kangaroos. They that, lead by four, they could lead by ten. That is absolutely criminal by the Blues defence not to get a fist on that. I mean, it wasn't a high leap. He basically just reached high and plucked it out of the sky because all the others were body on bodies. He kicks the goal. But they really needed to get a fist on that ball as it came through. In the end, he just took a pretty simple mark in the middle of about eight players. I think Peter Bell has had an important five minutes. He is nowhere to be seen early in the match, but he's just picked up four or five possessions uh, in the space of five minutes. And he's given the Kangaroos some sort of presence in the middle of the ground. If Stephen's going off, he has to lift. He's just got to find another gear and produce his best footy. The last couple of goals for the Kangaroos have been turnovers of the Blues. Brown is back. Probably Stephen's can't go anymore for uh, the Kangaroos. But McKay short kick cut off to Bradley and then Murphy missing his target. And the Kangaroos have kicked the last couple. Abraham's been quiet. 
but he can be destructive. He kicks to Carey. It's a good kick. There's Brown in the box. Carey launches himself, kicks to the goal. Spence Scholl's going to mark it on his own. Christie's having an absolute shocker. Got left behind, and Scholl on his own has taken the mark. First time I've seen any semblance of Pagan's paddock, and that's because... What are they the doing here, the umpires? They've actually called, touched off the boot, boys, so it won't be a mark of real ball. Can you up. believe that? Touch off the boot. Well, Ange is lucky there, because Scholl turned him inside out. They are stiff, the kangaroos. <laughs> Six, three to four, five. Carlton have got to stand up here. We were saying that about the uh, Kangaroos six minutes ago. Till McKernan turned it, Kerry over the top. Sexton, well done. Murphy. Little handball, okay, from Kutafidis to Camper, really. Lappin did very well, I felt. Pickett, Allison. First touch. To King, free kick coming back to Allison against Rice. Rice has played a tremendous first half. Such a bad free kick, actually. It's just held the play up a little bit. The Blues can compose themselves. Brown just testing that uh, AC joint. Allison, nice kick. McKern and the target. Launch as he can't. Murphy in the right spot. It'll be a ball up. It's 39 to 29. And Allison, who hasn't had uh, anywhere near uh, the amount of possession required, has been replaced by Anthony Stevens. He looks like he's just come out of the <laughs> trenches. He's just hobbled <laughs> on. He's got one leg. Look at this. Here's the goal. Sandy, a lot of this has happened. Ratton came off through the blood rule. He's back on the ground, but by gee, they've lost a lot of momentum, the Blues, while uh, since he went off the ground, and they have failed to regain it. And Adam Simpson, a very important tap there, which uh, allowed Harvey to release the handle to Bell. And as Jared mentioned, he's really come into this quarter, not having to worry about Brett Ratton. All of a sudden, he's finding a bit of space and they're getting more of the ball. And he's an important play for the Kangaroos, Peter Bell. Some boys, Fraser, Fraser Brown back on. Matty Allen's getting enough of the, the hands to the ball, but they just need to get out of the middle. He's getting it down to their man, but they're just getting flogged out of the middle. Carlton kicked the first three in this quarter. The Roos have applied with the next four, and it's Capuano again, proving it invaluable. Oh. Almost carry. He's got plenty of support. The veteran Scholl gets it to the run of Harvey. Is this two in 30 seconds? Mr. Should have been. Should have been. No pressure. But it's away to the left and one behind. And all of a sudden we saw Carlton have the first 10 or 15 minutes of this quarter. It's, uh, it's all the kangaroos at the moment. They are relentless in the, the surges forward. Still, John Longmire waits. What about the job that uh, Matthew Capuano's doing? Enormous. Absolutely enormous. Murphy's kick to the member's side. The ball spills off the hands of the pack. Will it go out? It does. Just in front of Camparelli. And it'll be thrown in between wing and right half forward. Member's side favouring the Kangaroos. 7-4 to 4-5. Margin is 17 points. Stevens has gone on to Craig Bradley. He's only on one leg. He's probably had an injection in that elbow. Blues may get away from this uh, boundary throw-in. Camparelli's left foot kick. Grant to converge on it, and he does well. Hick not the chaser. That'll test his hamstrings. Grant's kick towards half forward. Carey provides the contest. Ball spills to the front. Welsh. In goes Franchina. McKay there for the Blues. And the umpire will bounce between the centre of the ground and centre half forward, favouring the Kangaroos. They lead 7 4 to 4 5, and there's eight minutes left in the second term. You just saw Shannon Grant burst through the pack there, and Anthony Stevens had a chance to put a shepherd on, but it was on the side of his bad elbow, and he didn't do it. McKernan, Ratton read at best, belts it hard and high to half forward. Whitnell, this will be his first kick. First mark to Bruce. Goes onto the pocket. Hamill's the target, they've gone very wide, needs a good bounce, can he turn Vicky inside out? He cannot, Martin got back, Lappin's handball was good, Hickmont to go for goal, it's close, you can hear it, hit, <laughs> bang right in the middle. It was a good touch for Bloke, who came on a few minutes ago, Beaumont sitting it out with Massey and Nelson. And the Blues needed it, but a good sign for Hickmont, I feel. And it's a dangerous matchup up forward. Uh, Carlton have Aaron Hamill, one out with Nick Martin, he's really leading well, if they can get more of the ball down to him and give him the space. All he has to do is uh, get a few good passes and he's right in this. 16 points the margin, Archer takes the kicker. Manton's been dragged from attack to defence, he's picking up Craig Scholl. Lappin lets him go, so he kicks towards centre wing. Scholl oh, sees brilliant. the pack come oh. over the top and one of them is this man, Corey McKernan. Starting to show his class. 
Gives away quickly to Clayton, who goes to half forward. McKay unable to take it cleanly at the back. Shannon Grant, two attempts. He wobbles it. He needs it to spin to the left. Oh, oh there he goes! <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it just happens in a grand final. At no stage off the boot did that look like it was goalbound. It has taken one of the biggest right to left turns you've ever seen and then runs straight after that. But you make your own luck. I think, Jared, you mentioned earlier there's a few free kicks that have gone missing oh. uh, when the Kangaroos probably should have had them. Or maybe a bit of luck like this. Look at this second bounce that just goes sideways. Straightened up beautifully. There's been a number of examples of the front and square drilling of the Kangaroos that's taking effect at the moment. Some concerns in the coaching box there. David Parkin, Barry Richardson and Wayne Britton. The Kangaroos have kicked five goals in ten minutes. The chance now of the Blues. Bradley receiving from Hamill. Kicks the ball towards half forward. Lappin, he's got to get this and score a goal, Matthew Lappin. That's what he's paid for, and that's what he's gone and done. Two goals to Lappin. Very important answering goal for the Blues. The Kangaroos that had all the play in the last ten or so minutes, kicking five goals, the Blues get back to within 16 points once again. And it's a little bit like the third quarter last week, Sandy. Uh, the Blues were blown apart by Essendon. They looked as if they were shot. But they just hung on with the odd goal, the odd important goal. And that was one of them. Huge goal. He's kicked two, so he's done it a little bit, hasn't he? Pickett's been sensational on him, but Lappin's got two. If he got four for the match, he'd be happy. Eight, four to five, six. Still the Kangaroos in charge, but that'll give the Blues some hope. Capuano should have got a free kick. He did. King stops and props, belts it to half forward. Rice takes a very, very solid mark. He's been good, Rice. Camberelli so kicks it to Camberelli. He's got a great kick. Camberelli stood his ground. Well played, Camberelli. Such a damaging footballer with the footy. Kicks to Whitnell. Whitnell and also Archer. Hamill has been busy. Martin forces him to the line. Boundary throw in half forward left. They can and, just uh, get Whitnell to Dilly. Game. Sorry, uh, sorry, Dipper. Bruce, we're just saying, if they just get Whitnell to go, Marge has done a fantastic job there, but uh, he's just been our player at the moment. Just seeing our uh, peacekeeping troops in Dilly who are watching the match through the Seven Network. Grant's been terrific. Clean. Floats it to centre wing. McKay pushed forward by Shoal. Stevens. Bradley cut it off. Now with Bradley. It was Hogg that cut it off. Bradley tries to wobble. Hamill probably should have got a free kick. Camparelli. Camparelli, clever kick. Pickett. It's Pickett again. He's taking the mark. Anthony Stevens is really hurting. He's got to come off. He's not going to last too much longer. That's for sure. Kangaroos through Clayton Ooh. and Grant. Look out. Down towards Blake. It could be chopped off here. Clayton goes again. Put a cut one in the back from Grant Chino. Play on. They do towards half four. Big pack of players crunching it. Pickett takes them on. Tries to get through. Lack and drag to the ground. Carlton sensing they've got a real chance here to close the gap. Had a chance to get rid of it, Glen Archer, do you think? I was going to so, Robert, but I'll tell you what, there was a number of players for the Kangaroos who just uh, overused the football and the Blues look like they're free kicks being paid here to the Kangaroos. And it's going to Archer. Archer's kick in towards half forward. Stevens now running around the boundary line. It looks like he's going to go into, uh, into uh, the room straight away. And uh, we'll keep up with that with him. Gee, it's a sorry sight, isn't it? Uh, because he did uh, do pretty well. He picked up quite a number of possessions. Nine, to be precise. The kick forward for the Kangaroos in the direction of McKernan and Manton. And the ball spills there. You can see Anthony Stevens in the background there uh, going to the rooms. And it looks like Kudafidis has been released from McKernan. Manton's doing the job now on him. 
But what a comparison between the second quarter this year to the second quarter last year, where last year all the Kangaroos could do was kick minors, kick points. This year they've kicked six goals, one. 22 points the margin. Critical that uh, the Blues hold the Kangaroos up in the last four or five minutes of this second term. Umpire has decided on a bounce. It's about 30 metres out from the Kangaroos' goal. Classic case of the Yips, wasn't it? Two goals, 11 yep. in that second quarter. Their final term was seven behinds. 25 metres from the Kangaroos' goal. The Blues are going to hold here. Allen just won it. McKay to Hogg. Hogg gets it outside the 50. Good fly from Whitnell and G. Archer tried to build it away late, but uh, it might be uh, just coming back off the mark. I think Whitnell's kick's shocking, but it might fall in Lappin's lap. It turned changed. out to be a beauty, didn't I it? I don't think he meant that, but uh, good fortune for the Blues. They changed the balance up for Camparelli going into the square by himself with Blakey. Capuano at the back. Couldn't quite. Franchina good go. stuff to Sexton. Sexton steady, bouncing, rolling, and for the second time in this quarter, he's done a half a kick that's wobbled the wrong way and missed two he chances for Sexton. He had a terrific chance then to drag the North defender towards himself and give the hand pass over to Camparelli. I'm not sure what Arch was doing there, but <laughs> lucky he pulled it up a bit. Blakey's kicks a beauty to Allison. Brad Allison will go back and take his kick. He's a left footer, he'll come in board. Into half forward, Carey and Co. The beaten in front by Kudafidis. I still think the legs are going to be a major concern for the Kangaroos in the second half. Bradley takes it from Cooter and tumbles the punt. Pike comes charging out of the fence, but has it only for a moment. He needs support and he gets it through King. Look at David King go. He's sensational to watch, a couple of bounces. He's across the middle and up to half board once again. Carlton have the numbers. Is Carey there? He was, but he couldn't take it. Sexton is wide. Rice calls for it. Good Fraser Murphy Brown on his own now well. on the wing. Murphy takes it. A little too slow. Eventually gets it across to McKay. Back towards Rice. Now Murphy once more. Swings in towards the middle. Hawk says go, and he does. Up to half board, over the head of Whitnell. Pickett's at the back. Whitnell may have to do the roving. Pickett a chance. Can't pick it up cleanly. Still they go. The lap and hand pass. OK, out in front of Hamill. Taken by Martin now. Desperate work by the defence. Blakey gives it away, and he takes it back again from Martin Pike. And comes away towards centre wing. Murphy and King both there. Rapp pokes it down in front. This is going to be a survival oh, well fittest class. Beautiful play by Abraham to bring it back, but intercepted by McKay. A frantic passage of play as Pickett finally takes it over the line. What anyway, a successful piece of play. A couple of contests up on the wing. David King was real tired from that last run. He just couldn't get out of a trot. Abraham in trouble also coming off the ground. But you're right, David King, he's not used to the uh, running requirements of the midfield. and he's, uh, he's really blowing. Chance here for the Blues. Kudafidis, left foot snap at goal, it's marked! Allen covering some territory, has marked in front of Capuano. He's deep in the left forward pocket, certainly not any advantage whatsoever here for Matthew Allen. It's a difficult shot. And I wonder if this is going to be one of the things that... He's kicked the goal, hasn't he? I think he might have missed that near He's side. missed, has he? Releasing Kudafidis in the midfield. That's a, a trump card that David Parkin always had up his sleeve, and uh, maybe that's something that can get the Blues going here. Or Chase, Boys enjoying themselves. Chase, I was going to say, as, as you detest, one of the harder kicks is to run out with right angles and try banana as yep. Matt Allen did. Very hard, very tough. I know Corey McGurn did in the first quarter, but it's pretty tough. King to himself, and then gets it uh, and delivers. Good kick to Blakey at half-back. 9-4 to 5-8. The way the Kangaroos are going, they look spent. I don't think they can get to half-time quick enough. Blakey, they're sitting on a three-and-a-half goal lead. Front spot, Manton, well played, McKernan in the back, Manton. Ball to be won, Scholl and Manton comes out. McKay's been terrific, wobbles it to the line. One of the most interesting duels is Lappin and Pickett. As good as Pickett is, Lappin's actually playing some pretty good footy at the moment. Well, Lappin's got to hurt him by putting some goals on the board. That's the way to bring down a bit of the influence that Byron Pickett has. He's obviously an inspirational player. He needs to kick goals on him. Murphy getting plenty of it, finds some space, kicks to set a half forward, Hamill caught in the back, Mickey in the front, ball comes to oh, ground, Martin, play. terrific stuff to Bell, Bell can turn on a threepenny piece, kicks the ball back to centre wing, Shoal the flyer, oh, oh, he's, he's taken it, <laughs> terrific Mark Craig, Shoal, 
He hung in the air forever and took, took a beauty. I think eventually between the legs. I think we might see it hit the ground, but the umpire was smothered. He was on the blind side. Made it. What a grab. Rice on the far side. His kick mark by Sexton, who's got Rice, and now he goes around the outer side. Almost at half time here at the MCG in this 99 grand final. The Kangaroos holding their lead. Allison takes it from Bell. They can stretch it here. They need a mark from Carey. He's got to meet a couple. Silvani and Sexton both there. They pounce on it now. Silvani goes again. He loses it. Rice again shows desperation. Off to Silvani. Oh. Smash towards the line. Deliberate hit the umpire. Throw it in. Andy McKay. Interesting handball from Stephen Silvani when you're right next to the boundary line to handball and back into play. And Andrew McKay just got the shock of his life, I think, at that <laughs> stage. He said, no, I don't want this. Allen from the back. Seconds only remaining. Rice to clear, and he does for Carlton. Heading towards the outer side. Oh. Uh, just did his back. Oh. They come over the top. Lappert takes an exciting mark. He's an aerialist of some note, this young man. Eventually taking it on the chest. He kicks the centre wing, and an absorbing first half comes to an end. In that quarter, Carlton jumped out of the blocks with the first three goals. Then the Kangaroos, as good as they are, replied and steadied the ship. You'd have to say that after a magnificent start, uh, the Kangaroos, through the emergence of a couple of their big names, in particular Shannon Grant, who had seven kicks and kicked a couple of goals, and how could you forget Corey McKernan's two goals? Just when the game looked to be slipping from their grasp, McKernan turned in one of the most inspirational five minutes we've seen in grand final history. So that's Brent a situation, Allen. nine, four to five, eight. Dennis Bagan, now Troots and Dilly are watching this. They can see it on the big screen of the MCG and the crowd really love it. So at half time, it's 9.458 to 5.838. Well, it's the Premiership quarter, isn't it? The third quarter in the last 50 years. The team that has won this quarter 39 times has gone on to win the grand final. It is the Premiership turn, the third. Let's see what happens. Can the Blues make a move or will it be the Kangaroos? Quick kick by Harvey out of the centre. Massey's got to get his hands on it early. The ball eluded him, still Ooh. eluding. Simpson, terrific tackle, coup de feeties. Little kick didn't go far. Good body work. Little give was good. Simpson loads it up, goes to full forward. Sexton's at the back, pushes it away from Welsh to Abraham. Winnie's going to stroll in and kick a goal. <laughs> terrific start for the Kangaroos. And we'll see it on replay. Kerry hasn't had a lot of kicks, but there's one deft little tap there that just pushed the ball back in front of his players. He knew they'd be there, the support runners front and square. And that is, is what has created this opportunity for the Kangaroos. And have a look at the ease with which Winston Abraham strolls in. He just gives it a, a well, he shows it slightly to Michael Sexton, who uh, he's in a, a no-win situation. And he's almost half pace. He just jogs in and says, I'll slot this on the left. Just what Carlton didn't want. But a magical start for the Kangaroos. The margin out to 26 points. Alan Capuano. Capuano goes again, the big man. Winston is lurking. Kudafidis tries to get out. Bell caught by McKay. Does get the hand pass away. An opportunity for Camparelli. His hand pass okay to Bradley. They need a reply now. They need their skipper firing. Goes wider again to Camparelli. Floats it way over the top. Lappin is a goal kicker. He's Murphy. a long way out. In towards full board. Murphy from the back. Can't take the mark. Who's going to be first to recover? Archer got it out. An attempted soccer off the ground. It doesn't work. Martin, a chance to clear. Can't do so at the moment. He goes again. Oh. He wants the boundary line. Now there's a, Murphy's in trouble behind play. He may have done his knee, I think, Sandy. Went for the big fly, came down awkwardly. Well, drama, we've got Murphy down. Oh. That's what happened. Oh. Knee or ankle? Knee. That's the knee. Just have a look at it. Oh, oh. Gee, the foot gripped and the knee went. In the meantime, Rice has the kick now. This is a big kick. He's got to blow time out, surely. He's taking the kick. It's gone. And who can blame him? What a goal. That's a great kick. Gee, they've lost a bit here with Murphy going down. And he, he was sensational as a go-to player in the first half with 15 possessions. I am simply amazed at how they allowed that kick to be taken. We had, we've got six trainers standing around Justin Murphy, who's lying on the ground. 10 yards out from goal, if it, had have been, if it had been a poor kick, a contest could have formed right on it. I mean, look, that's right next to the 10-yard square, and that looks terrible. 
mean, the right knee's just gone there. Yeah, you'd be very surprised if that's not a cruciate ligament, medial ligament, and probably ankle damage as well, but uh, his afternoon is finished. So Carlton's resource is being tested now. Fraser Brown is on the bench. Adrian Hickmont is on the bench. Murphy obviously will take no further part. Brown getting ready to come back. There's Hickmont with Francina and Hogg. And Hogg. So a couple of taggers there with the bloke who's had a hamstring two weeks ago. Murphy's been so important, hasn't he, in that first half? Running through the lines. Yep. And I think it probably was you, Joe, that yelled out Murphy when the ball came in high. You're Jason because you could see him coming. Yep. Yep. But just going back to the free kick as we uh, watch Justin Murphy once again. This is uh, a cruel blow to any athlete. And Justin Murphy now faces a good 12 months of rehabilitation, you'd expect. It's the classic way of doing a cruciate ligament when the foot's trapped it, uh, by the ground and you're still rotating. But what a bit of... Uh, there's always an element of luck in the deliberate out of bounds. We saw one in the second term. The uh, the Blues knocked it over the boundary line. Andrew McKay. Andrew McKay. We saw one there. Equivalent circumstances result in a goal. And one of the reasons I think there, Jared, is Mick Martin made such good contact with the ball. It yeah. nearly flew the fence yeah. off the fist, didn't it? I mean, uh, unfortunately, there was uh, nothing too subtle about the way Mick did it. And he probably needed to aim a little bit further up the boundary line rather than going directly sideways. Fraser Brown is the player who's come onto the ground. Murphy being taken straight down into the rooms and this huge crowd is booing and ahhing as they see a replay of the incident that has caused him to take no further part in this game. Martin Pike's gone on to Fraser Brown, but Robbo, I noticed a change with Ellison coming on. Any significance there, Jared? I mean, he's an experienced campaigner up against the youngster in Chris Massey, who you were very keen on appearing at the start of the second half for the Blues. I'm not sure. Perhaps uh, with Shane Clayton being a tagger, and uh, he's the man that was taken off the ground, uh, Dennis Pagan sees a chance that maybe Massey will just run ahead of the ball, and, and uh, Brett Allison will be able to push forward and become a goal kicker. At 15 possessions, Murphy. The game will go on without him. Sandy Rice, who kicked the goal, knows all about this, doesn't he? Dean Rice has had two yeah. knee reconstructions himself. He's playing his heart out in his 199th. Terrible scenes for Murphy, but the bottom line, the Blues stay in touch with that goal from Rice. Yes, it was an important answering goal. Fraser Brown on the ground. Uh, we believe that at uh, least Matthew Hogg and Anthony Franchina are fit enough, so Brown into the fray. No risks taken, maybe? Maybe there is. The kick forward by Bell oh, in the oh, area of yeah. Carey. Punched away by Silvani. Gathered by Rice. The kick across his body. Out in the direction of Hamill. Gathered by Nelson. Hand pass to McKay. McKay, good kick. Has found Allen. Lurking at half forward. Little kick by Matthew Allen into the pocket. Not good enough. I don't know if Fraser Brown's the right option uh, on the full forward line either. Murphy going to the medical room. Martin Pike. Kicks the ball away from the left back pocket area. Out towards the centre wing. Nelson, beaten for it by King. Gathered by Bell. Goes back to Stevens. His kick. Squeezes a kick out of there. Abraham and McKay both fall over. But some tremendous running support by Manton. His kick into the pocket. Punched away. Again, good defensive work there by Anthony Stevens. Oh, well and he's going to be rewarded. Camparelli nearly onto him. But Stevens' kick is not all that good. He looks as though he's very proppy, Anthony Stevens, and Silvani marked. Got the ball away to Manton. Manton's kicked towards half forward. No mark. It spills to Kudafidis. He can't break away. Can he get a kick away? Can he run out of trouble? football. Hand pass goes wide. The Blues have got numbers. Matthew Allen kicks across his body to the front of the goals. No mark taken. The ball hits the ground. Beaumont beaten for it on this occasion by Blakey. Nelson oh. confronted by Pickett. Strong play by Pickett. He's caught. and it finishes in a behind a Carlton. And Capuano's in struggle, boys. He's in trouble. He's coming off the ground. He's to Scott Camparelli. 
probably just had a little bit more time then. He didn't realise how clear he was. He could have taken a few more steps. Again, he kicked off one step. You really need to just balance yourself before you have your shot. And John Lomai coming off for his first run. Thanks, Dipper. King belts it out wide. Here comes Cougar. Feet, he's over the top. Takes them on. Leads back. Oh, this will be far. colossal. Simpson runs him down. Brown's oh. got it too far. He ran a mile. Too far <laughs> against Cougar. <laughs> I, reckon, I reckon the next five minutes is going yep. to tell this match. Game's up for grabs. It's there now. It's 64 to 45. Good players are going down left, right and centre. And the Blues are trying to erode this lead. Big high kick by King. Abraham. Kangaroos need carry now to find the football. Manta. They're starting to get through the corridor, the Blues. To Lappin is becoming very, very important. Beaumont running for him. Kuda. Kuda could be the target. He kicks it to him. Could Kuda feed his take a big one? Flies. A couple at the front. Ball to be won. Bell was terrific. At ground level. Off the side of Stevens. Trying to get a handle on it was Longmire. Well done, big horse. Good that will settle him down. Gets it to Simpson. Simpson to centre half forward to Shoal. Terrific kick. Christo did well though. Got free Push kick. Out. Free kick to Shoal was the only thing that Ange could do. Carey and Sylvania in the goal square. Yep. Not Just much one hand in the middle of the back. Carey goes now. Shoal kicks it out wider towards the pocket to Welsh. Got through his legs. Sexton gets back. Little gift to Silvani. They're close to the line. Silvani playing the percentages. Bradley was good to Sexton. Sexton wide to Lappin. Lappin can't quite uh, with him. Pickett. Lappin and Pickett important bit of play. Pickett keeps it in. Still Pickett. Terrific stuff to Allison. Allison kicks to Welsh. Can't oh. quite. Nilsson's got him. Terrific. Nelson gives it to Bradley. Bradley steadies and he goes from half back. Big mark at the back. This is the man who's got to stand up. Kuda was sensational last week and he's threatening to do it again. Here's the youngster in Chris Massey looking towards half forward. Big pack of players. Whitman was in front. Couldn't take it. Martin in front of the pack. Does the roving and wobbles it wide. The race is on. Leading is Shannon Grant. He's kicked three goals in this game and has been sensational. But he's got to beat a couple here. He does well to get it away from Nelson. Opens the door for Bell. He suckers off the ground. Over the top of Manton, who's first to recover. Gives it away towards Bradley. Bradley finds Brown. He's on centre wing. Goes inboard. Here's a chance now for Ratton. Ratton can go. And he does. Onto the left foot. In towards half forward. Plenty of holding on. Play on. They do. So he can go free kick. We'll see it come back. Bobby's going to play on. He's going to play it. The advantage has been paid. Carlton have kicked a goal through Beaumont. And Carlton just have the momentum at the moment. Well, let's take a look at David King. He is looking for petrol tickets. Anthony Kudafidis has still got plenty in store. I reckon the Blues are in the box seat just at the moment. They certainly are. I mean, they have a little bit more system when they go forward, whereas the Kangaroos are just bombing it, hoping for Kerry to take a big mark. Capuano warming up. He's uh, bandaged up. Oh, gee, I've seen bad racehorses with more bandages on than Matthew Capuano. The bounce back at the centre. And some pressure now on the Kangaroos. Kudafidi's trying to lift. Bradley leading magnificently, Craig Bradley. That kick, not good. Matt. Marked by Bell. Lappin's got him. Head pass by Martin. Out wide to Lappin's immediate opponent in Pickett. Pickett kicks the ball towards full forward. A big mark. Big man, big presence, Corey McKernan. And he'll shoot for goal from about 45 metres. Well, I think this will be the man they're looking for up forward. They'd be pretty happy with the matchup on Glenn Manton. I mean, uh, Corey's certainly got a distinct height advantage. And... Probably grounds for a 50 metre penalty when you have a look at it. He's certainly thrown him to the deck after he'd taken the mark, but they need this, the Kangaroos. They need a steady because they are really under siege at the moment. Seems that when the two of them know they're together, that the front man just takes that role of blocker, yep. and then uh, whoever's from behind comes over the top. But I still think, uh, even if this goal goes through, that the Blues have still got the running power. It's going to be a monumental performance for the Kangaroos to hang on. Shot for goal by McKernan. It's a magnificent kick once again. He's got three. Three goals to Corey McKernan. And before he kicked his first, he'd only had a couple.
couple of kicks about halfway through the second term. He's having an impact on this match. Yeah, we can just see him fighting his way to the front as Wayne Carey holds the pack at bay. And it's only his fifth kick, but more importantly, his third goal. And a very important one for the Kangaroos. They need him to kick a couple more like this to give them a bit of breathing space. Wayne Carey now moving to the centre, boys. And just keep you up to date with the benches uh, for the Kangaroos, Capuana, Mooney and uh, uh, Motlop and also Shane Clayton. Thanks, Dipper. 11-4 to 7-9. Allen comes in late. Carey's having a run on the ball. Dipper's in the centre. Bell got it from Carey. Kicks it wide to Shaw with Chris Du. Well done, Rice, who I think has been terrific today. Wasn't he big in the last quarter last week when they made their move, the Blues? Plenty of time left in this Premiership quarter. It's 70 to 51, a 19-point lead. It's a big move, this one. Carey into the middle, gives him the legs, and uh, it also allows McKernan to go to full forward. Should Silvani go back onto him, Jared? No, I think uh, I think Silvani's got to go one out with Carey. And Jared, the they're ball. pretty hard to get uh, Capuano back on the ground. He's had his left knee strapped up. He's just going through uh, his paces on the boundary line here. At the moment, Soss is waving the runner out because he's matched up on Shannon Grant. So uh, he's wondering just who he should be picking up. Kuda, Kuda with Carey while he's on the ball. Yep. OK. Kuda Fides is having an impact here. Kicks to Brown with him, Pike. Pike belts the ball to the line. Boundary thrown between half forward and centre wing. There's Capuano. So important in the first half, wasn't he? He probably beat Allen in the first half, I think it's fair to say. Yep. Longmire, just get rid of uh, Allen, belts it down towards Carey. Carey having to work here. Bradley takes it off him, one captain to another. And the Blues got some valuable territory there, about 25 metres. But the wash-up is uh, what you were after at, at half-time, Jason. Manton against McKernan deep in the square. That's what you need, one out. All they have to do is get the ball down there quickly. It's interesting that they've left Silvani on ground for the moment. Winning the tap, Allen. Beautifully done, Camper. Really can't get clear. Wonderful tackle there coming from Archer, I think. Build it back to centre wing. Harvey rides with him. Rice puts him on Great the ground. Work, Harvey. Bell's gone. Bell's away with the bounce. Little low one to half forward. Welsh tries to half volley it. Sexton tries to take it away from him. Shoal holds him up. It's a ball up. It's 11 4 to 7 9. Good it was a clever from... handball, wasn't it, Jason, of Harvey? It certainly in front was. Of him. It certainly was. And good play from Welsh just then, too, because the last time the ball came low at him like that, he ran straight over the top. That time he at least trapped the ball and it wasn't allowed to go rebounding back towards Carlton's forward line. Well, Kangaroos midfielders, Sandy, just have to think about it now. They just can't bomb the ball long because they haven't got the tall at centre half forward. 12 minutes left in this term. Shoal asked the question again, but there'll be another bounce. Now Bradley's dropped back on to Shannon Grant. Justin Murphy. Giovanni could push forward under these circumstances. Murphy won't be taking any further part in this match. Don't worry about that. There's Camarelli. Next goal, absolutely vital. Martin gets a fist to it. Carey waiting down in front, needs someone going past. It turns out to be Martin. Allison has to run, and he does. A wobbly old bounce. He's going to go oh, again. He goes to end up. The door opens for Silvani. He can't pick it up. Well done by Silvani. He's got him. And he'll right. be beat. Silvani. That's why. Stuff by Silvani. That's why he's the fullback of the century. Oh, a terrible handball. Was it for his handball? Oh, it's got to go back. That was no advantage. He didn't play the advantage. He played play on, but. That's just Chris Massey's fault. He had the back turn to Silvani. All Fred Allison had to do was stand up, and he had 10 yards. It looks like he's got the old jelly leads at the moment. <laughs> McKay, Massey, and Camparelli combine. Down towards half forward. It comes off the chest of Martin to Carey. A little bit of time for the skipper. The son playing havoc with Simpson, but he's equal to the task. He takes the mark on centre wing. Oh, good kick. The Roos desperate for the next goal. McKerna oh, that's a take it high. Oh, Welch, Motlop, Motlop to goal. 20 metres out. He steadies the Kangaroos. Well, at the moment it looks like the trump card for the Kangaroos could be Corey McKernan up forward. And even on that occasion, the only way they could stop him from marking the ball was to give away a free kick. A good decision by the umpire to play the advantage. He just gets dragged down over the, over the neck. A good handball. I don't know if uh, Shannon Motlock was quite expecting it, but he was more than happy once he realised he was running into an open goal. And that'll settle his nerves as well. Well, the gap has uh, increased from half time by five points. It was 20 points in favour of the Kangaroos at half time. It is now 25. Allen, 
gets the knock. Taken away by Carey, the high kick. Knocked forward, attempted knock on there by Simpson. Silvani and Welsh. Well done by Welsh. Slips over at the critical stage. Gets the hand pass back to Bell. Bell from a standing start. Kicks towards half forward. A player pulls play on. Chance here for McKay. Wasn't that tough, strong football. Out wide to Allen. Here's a good contest here. Longmire and Allen. Longmire, the fresh man. Back to Carey having an impact. Kicks the ball into the pocket. The ball spills to the front. Chance here for Harvey. Back to McKernan. Shrugs the tackle. Free kick off throw, the ball. We'll go to Dean Rice. Paid it for a throw, I think. Robbo Carey's had ten possessions for the match, six of them in this quarter. The Very last five minutes. Importantly, him into the midfield. importantly, because his confidence certainly will grow enormously as a result of that. The ball at half forward for the Blues. Pike and Brown. Look away hand pass. Goes back to Bell. Bell into the middle. Mark is taken by Grant. Brandy Very important it. couple of seconds here for the Blues. Grant from the midfield. Goes towards That's the McKernan Manton matchup. Good punch away by Manton. Ball oh. falls back to the middle. <laughs> Critical here that the Blues gather the ball. Hand pass. Finishes with Nelson. Bradley. Very much a creator from the midfield. Allen's got to hit a target. Left foot kick by Matthew Allen. Brown. Goes towards full forward. It's punched away. But back into the park of Silvani. Stephen Silvani. He's kicked. He looked for the distance. He got up and in underneath it a bit. The ball spills to the front. It's 4-2. to two. The Kangaroos favour. And Carey gets the ball back to Simpson. And Simpson's short kick has been marked by Harvey. Between halfback and centre wing. Carey having a huge influence. Silvani lost in the midfield at the moment, isn't he? It's either going to be forward or back, you'd think. Yep. Harvey short. Good to Grant. Three first half goals. Shannon get a couple of touches again this quarter, Shannon Grant. 12-4-7-9. They haven't broken the Blues back, but it's a good lead. It's a very handy break. Grant with uh, plenty of penetration. Oh, oh McKernan. He's starting to become the big player on the oh, ground. Quick kick, quick kick. He goes on now. He's in a bit of trouble. The left foot, we can see Murphy there in the box, and Abraham's marked it. Well, he got himself into a bit of trouble there, McKernan, but uh, everything he touches at the moment turns to goal. Well, I think he was he was looking to get the quick kick on the Scott Welsh, who was running back towards goal, and in the end, he put himself under pressure when he had a bounce. He had to throw it on the left boot, and Winston Abraham was the quickest to react. And he took a tremendous diving chest mark, and we know what sort of kick this fellow is. Big difference when they go forward. The Blues get it to half forward so often, it's belted away, isn't it, in a pack mark situation. The Kangaroos are able to quickly get through. And Winston, who hardly touched it in the first half, has a chance to kick his second goal of the turn. And all of a sudden, with Carey in the midfield, it's opened the Kangaroos' forward line up and giving McKernan a, a real free reign. He's so skillful, you'd reckon he'll kick it for sure. Steady as you go. Steady as you go. Winnie's kicked his second. And now they're away. It's going to be tough now. They've pinched a five-goal lead. Well, it was turning into a real arm wrestle this quarter, and uh, the Blues were certainly holding their own, but, well, it's a masterstroke, whether uh, Pagan called it or the King called it himself. Kerry moving into the midfield. It's made Silvani a little bit uncomfortable. He's picked up a heap of touches already, and McKernan is running rampant up forward. Justin Murphy back out on the ground. Winston Abraham turns 25 next Tuesday. He may start celebrating early. Already two goals in this quarter. Longmire up against Allen. Abraham again, out of the middle. A short little punch by Bell. Goes to right half forward. A couple of them can't take it cleanly. Scholl pushes it even further. Taken by Sexton. Carlton now, desperate times. They need a couple smartly. Bradley. Big clash on the outer side. Sandy could if he's now gone to full forward, Mickey Martin picking him up. I think Mick Martin so far one of the unsung heroes for the Kangaroos. He has had an outstanding afternoon. The two skippers clashing on that far side. Forcing the throw in. Longmire got a hand to it. Bell unable to get clear. Brown eventually steals it. Kicks up towards half forward. Courage shown by Simpson. He's played the pack. He has played one heck of a game too. He's had one heck of a season. He's been very, very good. 50 metre penalty against Kurofidis. And Big Mick having a few choice words to say to him too. <laughs> yeah, that's courage personified by Adam Simpson. Hasn't missed a game this season. And you've got to say, Kuda could have cleaned him up a downside worse than he actually did. If you're going to give away the 50, 
you may as well put him out of commission for a while. I know it sounds bad, but if you're going to make that contact and take that risk, make them pay. Simpson may still make them pay. It goes over the top. Into the pocket. Sexton gets a short kick. It won't sit for Abraham as he would have liked. Taken away by Beaumont across to McKay. Andy McKay is away. Up towards centre wing. Leading in the race is Aaron Hamill. Has to go again. Pike's got him. Look at the tackle of Martin Pike. But he's able to get it across to Rat. Pokes it up in the air. This is one for Whitmore. And he was off. Well, he played on. He was off. And he's under pressure. Kicked it out of bounds on the ball. Why on earth? I just can't work out why he played on. Unless he was worried about giving away a free kick for the push out. And he thought if I play on quickly, it'll be okay. But just no advantage to his side by playing on, unfortunately, for Lance Whitmore. Chris Massey taken from the ground. Adrian Hickmott back on. Down the ground, Mickey Martin will kick the ball close to the line. Gets about 45 metres in front. Hamill couldn't take the mark. Ratton gathered here by Harvey. Harvey's left foot kick is a bit of a mongrel punt. McKay couldn't take it. At the full of the ball, Bell. Beautiful roving by Peter Bell. Lovely hand pass. Hand pass over the top. Came from Welsh to Bell. Bell's left foot kick into the pocket. It's swinging with the breeze to the advantage of Motlop. And then his little left foot kick is out on the full. Good pressure applied by Beaumont. So the free kick will be paid to Beaumont. He plays on quickly. Chris do. Finds his target out wide. It's Nelson. Runs away from half back. Looks down the ground. Kicks in the direction of half forward. Martin in front. No good for Kudafidis that kick. No penetration at all. And Martin safely between centre half back and right centre wing has marked the ball. Short to Blakey with some space now. Blakey loads it up, kicks it to half forward, not particularly well. Rice, McKernan, well done McKay, who stood up all day. Oh, Poor oh, hand, oh. Well, we'll get a second crack, I think, to Lappin. Lappin over the top, will it sit for McKay? Back to Rice. Oh, Gee, the pressure. kangaroos will be happy. Pickett, pick it. Pickett just kept at him all the way. The kangaroos, it's all happening. I think, Martin, I think Martin's got uh, Kudafidis frustrated for the moment. And the Blues have got some problems trading by five. Back to McKay. McKay whips it back in. Whitnell tries to get himself into oh. the picture. Carey gets rid of Archer. That's not what they wanted. Off the ground by Whitnell. Little handball, terrific to Lappin coming oh, from Carey. Chase. Wonderful chase by Pickett. And then Steam in through his <laughs> oh, That is terrific stuff. They're going to talk about that tonight. Archer a bit injured at the back. Simpson kicks to half forward. Wonderful grab by Welsh. It's all happening. Taking off his grab. And also Bell. The kick's a beauty to Bell. That could be the match winning bit of footy. That could be the match winner at half back. And look at the players running over to Mick Martin to give him a bit of a pat on the back. He just took the bit between the teeth. He didn't so care who was in front. Brett Ratt and Fraser Brown. Two of the more experienced, and, uh, and we know that they're pretty tough and good at tackling, but he just said, no, I'm coming through. Pretty good by Pickett on Lappin, too. Yeah, great chase. Just a half a metre in that. He's nearly away to kick the goal. Bell to give them a six-goal lead. And he's drilled at home. It's another one. Well, Dennis Pagan didn't want to look at the tape from last year. He'll play that bit of playback time and time again. Big problem now for the Blues and for David Park, and it's not just where he's got problems out on the field. He's got to produce some attacking moves that will see the Blues realise some goals on the scoreboard. And now maybe is the time to send Silvani forward. He's got to do something to kick some goals. This Carey and Archer clashing with one another, but what a difference 365 days makes. In two quarters last year, the Kangaroos booted two goals, 18. So far, they've kicked 14-4, and I don't think they want to stop yet. Abraham had a good turn in the middle. Longmire gets it away to Mick. It's a fearsome sight, isn't it, to see Mickey Martin come screaming towards you with that balding head. But my, what a day he's had. Sexton almost threw it. He goes again this time. The hand pass to McKay is off to Brown. Brown goes short and he's got Rat. Rat wants Whitnall. Great kick. That's better. Lance Whitnall, 35 metres out, 45 degree angle. Carey back at uh, the key half forward yep. position. With just under four minutes remaining. The Blues have got to peg back at least a couple. They're going to have any chance of coming home. Whitnall 
from 40 metres, starts at right, and it stays right. Well, you'd think they need to make the most of their opportunities because they're not getting anywhere near as many as they were early on, and you just can't afford misses like that. It's been a tough afternoon on Glen Archer. 17. 17 effective scoring shots to 18. Oh, Glenn, <laughs> he Glenn is an angry man, Glen Archer, isn't he? Oh, he might be taking out him after the clash <laughs> with his captain, who knows? <laughs> Oh, good lead. Must use Harvey. Simpson uses him. Brent Harvey's got it on halfback. He led from half forward to get that ball. Kurt has been released back into the middle of the ground. I think if uh, the Blues are to get uh, competitive again, they've got to kick uh, goals in a hurry. And Kurt Aferti's plays his best footy, I think, in the middle of the ground if he's not playing in the key role of centre halfback. Kangaroos prepared to soak up the seconds in the latter minutes of this uh, third term. Harvey's long oh, kick has been marked here by the Kernan, unopposed. The ordinary play by Carlin McKernan from just forward of centre wing. Doesn't he kick the ball long distances? This is no exception. It gets to the full oh. forward line. Oh, just falling over. Grant gets the hand pass back to Carey. Left foot kick by Wayne Carey is offline and out of bounds on the full. So the free kick will be taken by his immediate opponent, Stephen Silvani. And he goes short, finds Beaumont. Beaumont into the centre, very important here. Geez, missed his target. Shoal, oh. turnover. Good punch from behind by McKay, gathered by Motlock. Back he goes to Pickett. Pickett's left foot snap is just... Oh. He's chasing on the forward line. He's taking hand passes up there, trying to kick goals for his team, Byron Pickett. On this occasion, just missing. But they've got a comfortable lead, the Kangaroos. It is a 37-point advantage, close to three-quarter time. What about the quarter from Peter Bell at the moment? He has had 14 touches in this quarter. Shoal was the best flyer, belted it down, Bell. 15. 15. <laughs> Grant's kick three, Grant's kick three, Grant's kick four. <laughs> Grant's kick four. Well, the Premiership quarter, you betcha. You betcha again. 15-5 to 17. Well, he's got to be pretty close now to the North Smith medalist, is Shannon Grant. Uh, he has had three outstanding quarters, and along with uh, Peter Bell, Adam Simpson, and I think also Winston Abraham has had a very big third quarter. They've really just given the Kangaroos the spark they were looking for. We said it was a premiership quarter. Sandy, you betcha. It's 15-5 to 7-10. Six goals to two, and the Blues have been torpedoed with just under a couple of minutes left. The Kangaroos' defence has lifted. Their attacking zone has been fierce, and this is John Blakey. Playing in his 299th game, ventures to the outer side. Christie comes over the top. Lapper Great tries tackle. to get clear. Could have been held. Shaw, the lightning hand pass was good to Harvey, who's had a field day. Bell had it spent early, but is able to regain it and go back to Harvey. McKernan wants it long. He's pumping through the middle. He's had a couple of bounces. They close in. He's forced to kick high, up to full forward. At the back is Silvani, and he's quite prepared to concede him a high with Carey closing in. Pretty popular decision uh, in front of the North Melbourne. The Kangaroos to you scored that one. What chance have you got? <laughs> 52 plays, 96. And whilst we speak about those that have kicked the goals for the Kangaroos and uh, the midfield stars, I, I think this Premiership, uh, if they go on and win, has been because of the defence of the Kangaroos. And one of them is David King. Walking. Again, he sends it forward, but it's taken by Silvani. He finds Nelson, who thought about McKay, and eventually does try and give it to him. Andy McKay, a dual All-Australian player, All-Australian this year, after a fine season. But he's going to see a throw-in on the Kangaroos' left half forward flank area. How good the double, Mick Martin and Glenn Archer. <laughs> Boundary throw-in, left half forward, Kudafidis tried to get the ball there to uh, Nelson. He wasn't able to control it and eventually spills for a throw-in. Clever tap by Shannon Grant to suddenly post it forward too. So 44 points the advantage now. It certainly is a big margin in favour of the Kangaroos. Manton trying to break away. Gets another chance. Bradley in the hot seat. Got his right foot to it. Kicked it out towards the wing. But uh, Pickett 
He's working overtime, trying to control Matthew Lappin. It looked very dangerous for Byron Pickett in the second term, but he stuck to his guns, and he's been an integral part of that uh, vice-like kangaroo defence. Sexton knocks it forward. King for the Kangaroos. Good oh, mark taken by Christou from behind Craig Scholl. Got to get a goal out of this. Christou goes wide. Not bad either. Hickmott will take the mark. No, he dropped the sitter. Gets a second chance. Breaks away from Pike. Gets the handball. Beaumont running towards his forward 50 metre area. Goes for goal. Terrible kick. Scores are behind, but must have only just got through for that score. At the moment, unfortunately, when they're going forward, the Blues, they don't have a target on the full forward line that's leading towards the player with the ball. And in the end, we saw Simon Bowman on that occasion. He was looking and waiting, almost pleading for someone to lead towards him. And he just tried to, uh, to kick it along in the end because he had no other options. King kicks it as far as he can. He knows it's late in this third quarter. Out on the big fly, taken by Grant. Four goals to three-quarter time. Must be one of the front runners for the Norm Smith medal, but there are a lot of players out there at the moment for the best on the ground. In that quarter, the Premiership quarter, the Kangaroos kick 6-2. Justin Murphy, well, he must be so disconsolate. Bad luck for him. He was an important player. He's got a serious knee injury. Start of the final term, the last grand final of the century. And the Blues have got to create history here by coming from seven goals behind. Bradley's kicked a half forward. A tussle. Pickett, terrific. Belts it out. Whitnell's had a dog of a day so far, the 20-year-old. Oh, no. And he's going Gee, to get a free kick ordinary, from nowhere. That's just soft. It's soft. a game that's been played in terrific spirit, where they've had a decent go at the yep. body of each, yep. each uh, of their opponents. That was an average free kick. Well, he has had a bad day. This... Huge talent, Whitnell, leading goal kicker of the club. Great education for a young man, he's only 20. He had a chance just before three-quarter time, he needs to kick this. 45 metres out, he's, he's missed it. He's missed it. And when you look at that miss, another miss in the third, the camp really missed in the third quarter, they've had a few little chances. What about the bench for the Kangaroos dipper? Yeah, Bruce, you're Matthew Capuano, Mooney, Shane Clayton and Brett Allison. Whew. He did put his foot over the line. This would be a brawler. Just slipped at the critical moment, and the toe poked over the line. And he knows. I'll tell you what the genius is, those umpires. He was 35 metres away. He's picked a <laughs> centimetre over. So, Jesus, it's almost like Wimbledon. They're checking the chalk mark yep. now. <laughs> Another opportunity for Carlton after the Whitnell miss. Maybe he can make amends. Maybe he'll be the man. The hand pass. To Francina, it's high coming back in towards goal, might just about make it. Touched on the line, on the line. And touched by Mick Martin. Has he made a mistake this afternoon? No, he's been very good. He, uh, he looked a little bit in trouble early when Hamill had some space, but unfortunately, Hamill didn't get the service or the delivery he was looking for. But Mick's got better as the game's gone on. Aussie, the Carlton bench. Matthew Hogg, Justin Murphy, Fraser Brown, oh. and Chris Messi. And Justin Murphy's not only got ice on his knee, it's also his ankle, so two problems there. And Bradley's got the ball, he gives it to Beaumont, who's a left footer, sits nicely for him in towards goal, smashed out in front, that could result in a goal to Hamill, beautifully claimed and taken to ground. The Kangaroos' defence has been sensational today, and again it was Martin Pike in the thick of things. Look at this, look at those steely eyes, and that vice-like grip. Hamill was going nowhere. Throw in. Carlton still attacking. Oh. And again, Gee. some rather pedantic free kicks have been picked up and the umpire Andrew Coates desperately trying to explain the reason that he gave it. He was the All-Australian umpire last year, officiating in his second grand final. John Longmire to add insult to injury. Gets whacked in the head with the ball as it's been returned. He's <laughs> done a good job since he came on, though, John. He has. Had some critical taps in the middle. Allen then for his first goal, but not to be. It's away to the right. Will struggle for the distance as it's smashed defensively over by Glenn Archer and the boys. Another behind. 40 points, the margin. <laughs> oh, it's not much in it. King again. This time to the outer side. Harvey waiting down in front in the true Rovers position. 
kicks in towards the centre. Danger here. Real danger. Peter Bell gets clear. Could have been held. Motlock plays on. He's inside 50. Tries to poke it over the top. Puts Welsh under the puck. Where's he the advantage? Draws it in. He may go. Now, why wouldn't the umpire just pull it back after he saw that the handball wasn't going to lead to a clear advantage? I mean, I know they're able to do that now, yep. and it has been done on a few occasions. Surely they should have brought that back and given it to Peter Bell. Justin Murphy looking at a long-term injury and looking at playing in a losing grand final side. A double tragedy for him as Kudafidis gets a quick kick. Well, the kick goes back towards the middle of the ground, and as we see Murphy in the box in the left-hand top corner, Blakey kicks the Kangaroos. Deep into the goal square. Kudafidis missed the mark. Gets it back, though. Kicks it out wide. Player on his own is lapping. Can go down the ground. Must deliver with precision. And he does. Puts it out in front of Hickbot. And he's marked Good about man. 60 metres out. He kicks to a one-on-one -on -one back in the goal square. And well done, Whitball. Couldn't oh, take the mark, though. Archer, still a chance. Kept alive by Allen. Still Whitball. Must get his foot to it. Can't break the tackle. Gets his foot to it and kicks it behind. I'll tell you what, it looked like he was going to take the mark first. Somehow Glenn Archer managed to get a hand in there and he was about to claim it for the second grab. He, he spoiled it and then it was just a comedy of errors after that. It kept spilling back towards Lance Whitnell and in the end tackled very well by Glenn Archer again. First four scores of the last term, all to Carlton, all behinds. Can you believe they've had more scoring shots than the Kangaroos? That uh, is not an indication of uh, the Kangaroos' play today. Perhaps it is the fact that they've been so clean up forward. 15-6, play 7-15. Eight goals, 22 they kicked last year. And today it's 15-6. Well, the Blues are desperate. They've got to get one and hope it turns into two or three in a hurry. Just to put some scoreboard pressure on. Bradley to Rice, a floater. Whitnell and Arch. Arch has played another magnificent grand final. His oh, third. Well, done, Mick. well played by Martin. Change about to come on Capuano. They built the ball back to centre half forward. No mark taken there by Kudafidis. Simpson wrapped on hands and knees. Abraham can hurt them here. Bell's on his own. He oh, straightens has up. To use Bell. He had his Still got Bell on his own. Still with Abraham. Kicks it to Bell oh. now. Watch this. Bell's taken the mark. Oh, Silvani flattens him. 50 metre penalty. Oh, Kerry's giving a little backhand to Craig Bradley just to even things up, I think. <laughs> he was pointing for the 50 and accidentally caught Craig Bradley high. Well, he was sitting there for an eternity, wasn't he, Bell? It's getting messy now from Carlton's point of view. So many times we've seen it in grand finals in recent years. Another one. Three goals to Bell. Gee, haven't they got some goals out of their midfield today? With Bell and Shannon Grant. And Winston Abraham. The unfortunate thing now is what was such a good contest for half a game might be remembered as another very one-sided grand final result. And uh, that'll be a tragedy at the end of the day. We were given uh, a couple of moments though through both the first and second quarter where it was just five minutes of the most intense competitive footy yep. that we've seen. Peter Bell would be enjoying this a little better than being at Frio, one gets the impression. He's booted three, one in the second, one in the third, and now that one. The Roos are running towards Premiership number four. Pickett, solid as a rock in defence. And sensational to watch. Simpson has been a wonder boy. They're running now. They can smell it, they can sniff it, they can sense it. Shannon Grant in line for the Norm Smith medal. And Matty Hogg playing in his last game. As always, the Terrier. Fraser Brown, Franchina on the bench. Longmire Camparelli. Out the back it comes. Carey. A hurried left foot kick. Beaumont wobbles it back towards the middle. Whitnell takes the mark. Not a memorable day for Lance Whitnell, but all part of the learning process as he finds Adrian Hickmott. Tries to bring it inboard and does so towards Aaron Hamill. Still a long way out as the 22-year-old. Who during the week thought Christmas had come early. Now he'll have to think again. Mickey Martin 
Just tries to paddle it away and then applies a tackle. fantastic oh, tackle. tackle. Look at that. There's another one from Pickett. And that's what's really dropped oh. off, and it's been the big difference between the two sides since half time. The tackling of the Kangaroos has been sustained. The pressure has been sustained. The Blues have dropped right off in that area. And one of the great war horses of the competition is coming finally from the ground. And he has earned his premiership medal. He certainly has. You're speaking of Anthony Stevens. A cloud as we see Camparelli shoot for goal for Carlton, and he pops it through. Well, a much, uh, a much needed goal for Carlton, I mean, but it's come about 30 minutes too late. He's probably been their most consistent player over the course of the day, Scott Camparelli. And he's had 25 possessions, kicked two goals. That's uh, certainly a very workmanlike performance. But unfortunately, he hasn't had enough help from his teammates. And any score that they put on the board now is really just window dressing. Massey on the ground for the Blues. And Dean Rice has gone to the bench. And Carey's gone to defence. Chance for Camparelli, but kick forward again by oh! Simpson. Simpson has got to be a contender for this best on ground oh, yeah. grand final. Shoal over the top unselfishly. Motlock for his second. What about Shannon Grant? A magnificent touch. Tried to get the handball away. And then he just lunged and knocked it out again to Craig Shoal, who with the handball released Shannon Motlock. And he runs in to kick his second. What about the fly from McKernan? Did he get up and reached over the top? He was looking for it. I don't, think he's, Grant. I don't think his match is uh, and the importance of it is reflected on the stat sheet. He's kicked three goals, but he's only had eight possessions. He's, he's taken six marks, yep. but it's been that big presence. He's, and he's done it when the game was in the balance for the Kangaroos. Created opportunities for a lot of those around him. When you have a look at, uh, at the other end, Whitnell and Hamill between them. 86 goals for the year, not one today, not one out of Hamill and not one out of Whitnell as we're getting a new footy. Someone obviously souvenired it and uh, it'll be worth a bit of money, I'm suggesting. Pretty ironic that uh, both Hamill and Mickey Martin were let off in controversial circumstances at the tribunal. The Kangaroos have clearly been the big winner out of that. Steve-O, we saw a moment ago. As uh, Jason said and Jared, he certainly has earned his stripes today yet again. Been a wonderful performance by the Kangaroos. Blakey got a high one. He's playing his 299. Well done there by Kudafidis to Nelson to the pocket. Whitnell's got it. He's got his hands on it a bit in the last quarter, but he's had some chances to kick goals. He's kicked three points so far today. He's kicked goals in 22 of the 25 matches he's played this year. So he's been so consistent, and yet today when they probably we're relying on three or four. He's just deserted him. He's kicking. Let's see if he can get a late one here. From the pocket, just 20 years of age. Good kick. He's kicked a goal. He's kicked a late goal. So Whitnell gets his first. And the Blues are just playing for a bit of pride now, aren't they? They certainly are. Look, I'm... I'm glad for Lance Whitnell's sake that he managed to kick the goal. He kicked three points prior to that. And he really needed just to take a good mark. It's a strong mark with the attentions of Glenn Archer. And look, at the end of the day, he's, he's had 13 touches and six marks. He certainly got himself involved where he could. He hasn't had the influence, unfortunately, that he would like to have had, but he just needs to finish strong. Thirty-nine points is the margin. With some 13 minutes of the 99 season remaining. Bradley out of the middle from Kudafidis. He wanted McKay, but Scholl's got him covered. That'll open the door for Simpson. Off the side of the boot, down to half forward, McKernan. Quick to give it away to Winston Abraham. Oh, Bam, look at that. With a bomb! How's that? Spinning away to the left. One behind. The question has been asked quite a bit in recent times. Which team is the team of the 90s? Perhaps the Kangaroos have answered that this afternoon. Big bomb from Winston. They've still got it in the area, and it should result in a goal. It does. There's another one. Peter Bell is having a big day. Bell has got his fourth goal. Three of those in the second half. And there's the North Chief.
chairman Ron Casey. No tears this year, Sammy. No tears this year. <laughs> Just replaced by a broad, beaming smile. Well, Peter sure Bell has get. gone uh, from perhaps one of the worst players on the ground for the Kangaroos in the first quarter to one of their very best for the match. 46 points the margin and the chairman of the uh, Kangaroos, Ron Casey, pretty excited. Bounce of the ball in the middle, Allen gets it back. That's a throw. Dispossessed oh, there was Rat, and he's right. been penalised because the umpire very much on the scene. So the free kick to go to Adam Simpson, and he certainly is a uh, tremendous midfielder for the Kangaroos. Harvey to Welsh. Getting some uh, possessions now, Scott Welsh kicks the ball in towards full forward, ball spills to the back, Silvani prepared to rush it behind to the Kangaroos. Well, the man who's played his 200th game today, uh, John Longmire, finally is playing the grand final and hopefully in the winning one, he's uh, come off the ground and Capuano back on. Capuano on the ground. We have 12 minutes left in this match. I just wonder how history will view the move of Wayne Carey into the middle of the ground. It's got to go down as one of the great final, great grand final coaching positional moves because it was Wayne Carey that uh, added the fresh legs and uh, helped oh. kick the kangaroos away. Pick it pre and he took it off Lappin's Gee, bootstraps it to Harvey. Harvey short to Bell. Clayton and misses the lot. And you'd like to think that Cameron Mooney could get on in the last 10 minutes. I think he's the only player out of all the ones that are participating to date that doesn't have a touch. Yeah, and he started on the ground. Mm. He was uh, forward at the beginning. Had a chance early, and they brought Welsh onto the ground in his place. Bradley to Massey, stretches a kid. Massey's left-hand handball, OK, to Christo, who settled after a pretty shaky start, but uh, they've been bombarded. That's a good kick to Hamill now. Whitnell's on here. Hamill over the top. Good looking kick to Whitnell, got him, and Whitnell's going to kick his second. A city and a dog of a day. In the end, he's making something of it, the kid. 11 kicks, 7 marks, and he's kicked a couple. An important thing, I think, for a young player in a grand final, it's one thing to be beaten, but it's also another thing to drop your head and not be a part of the play. Now, he's fighting this right out. And he's certainly going to learn a lot from this performance tonight, today. And at the end of the day, look, if he's kicked two goals and he's had 16 possessions or so, I mean, he's done a pretty good job. Two goals now. The margin back to 41 points. Lance Whitnell, a couple in this last term. Putting some respectability to his name and the score. Out of the middle, Kuda Fides plucks it from the air. And kicks it high, just over the 50, down towards Whitnell and oh. again, but that's a fine use of the body. And a great grab by Glenn Archer. As the shadows begin to lengthen on the MCG, the Kangaroos are just 11 minutes away from what will be, no doubt, a mighty celebration. The horse, John Longmire, finally getting his wish. He's going to play in a winning grand final side to actually play, to be here with his teammates. Pickett has been one of them, and he's been excellent. Byron Pickett towards centre wing. Johnny Blakey, unheralded in game number 299. What a magnificent ambassador for the game he's been. McKay caught. Kudafidis lurks. Hamill tries to steal it. Almost gets out, but Blakey's in the way. They're handling it like a hot potato at the moment. Seven or eight of them had a crack at it. Finally, it's McKay who gets it out. Welch smashes towards the line. Taken by Massey, pushed ever so close to Ratton. He's shoved in the back, but it's over the line. And we've got a throw in on centre wing in a tired and untidy passage of play. And speaking of John Longmire, he'd be one of the few people in the stadium that would know exactly how Jason McCartney feels right now, who's no doubt enduring a bittersweet afternoon. Speaking of Jason McCartney, who was suspended during the week. And Sam, you mentioned Johnny Blake earlier. How well has he done? Discarded by Fitzroy in 1992, and now it's his second premiership with the North Melbourne Kangaroos Football Club. It's wonderful for him. It's just a shame he's got to wait so long before notching up his 300th. Well, not a bad way to kick off a season, though, Sandy. <laughs> opening in your 300th match. 
big Mickey Martin just getting in on the action, thumping a few over the boundary line, greeted with a great roar from the Kangaroos fans on that wing every time he does it. And that's when the hurt has got to start to kick in for Carlton, the realisation that uh, maybe the Kangaroos are playing out time now, it's all over. Shoal hand pass, oh, beautifully plucked in by David King. Someone said he'd lost his legs, he's regained them, he shoots towards full forward. Bell's waiting at the back. Oh, Belly! He had that one marked down. That was for number five. Gee. And it could have also meant an inscription on a medal for him, too. Who knows? No, he can't believe it. Just took it a little bit too easy. He had everything sized up and the execution just wasn't there. How about the pain? I mean, you'd think you were running a couple of points <laughs> yeah. in front, wouldn't you? <laughs> Terrific stuff by uh, the cameraman there to capture the moment for Peter Bell. Bradley's kick in. That's not a, if that's not a mark, it's certainly a free kick to Nelson. Nine and a half minutes left in the 1999 Coca-Cola Grand Final here at the Melbourne Cricket Ground. And the scoreboard showing that the Kangaroos have this game well in hand. Hogg to do the little hand pass. Hickmott back to Hogg. He's in strife. He's in all sorts of strife. Harvey confronting him, locking him up. And the ball will be bounced right half forward for the Blues. About 80 metres around from their goal. And he's been another solid contributor for the Kangaroos. Brent Harvey's done a very good job as a link man today. Hickmott doing the ruck work, bashes it forward. Pickett gathers. <laughs> Always looks composed. Byron Pickett kicks the ball towards half forward. Gathered by Carey. Gets the hand pass away, only to be gathered here by McKay. Just knocks up, shrugging tackles. As does his opposite number at the other end of the ground in Byron Pickett. And the kick has been marked by Allen. He's within scoring range for Carlton. Matthew Allen, he's tried very hard. Third in the Brownlow medal this year, and he's had a great season. 11 possessions, 17 hit-outs, and in the late moments of the game, he's kicked the goal. First goal in this match to Matthew Allen, the 11th on the scoreboard for Carlton. 11-15, they trail the Kangaroos 18-9, a margin of... 36 points. And the last two goals from the Blues, I think, have, uh, have uh, given us an example of how they would have liked to have approached this game. The previous goal was by Lance Whitnell, where it came in quickly and he used the space behind him, robbing Glenn Archer of the ability just to punch behind. And Matthew Allen then went forward. Give the Blues a bit of credit here. They're sticking to their guns, aren't they? Could have got really ugly on the scoreboard. 18-9 to 11-15. The Kangaroos, six goals in front and home. Cooter out of the centre. Comes out wide for Lappin. Pickett's really destroyed him in the second half after Lappin probably got on top just before half-time. King, Capuano, he set it up early. Blazes away. They're all pretty tired. Manton chasing. Back there, Sexton. Sexton towards the line. Keeps it in. Hamble down oh. the line to Cuda. Cuda, they're pretty happy to see it go over the line and out. Young Mooney's on the ground, boys, and uh, Capuano off the ground. Unfortunately, his knees. Uh... Dipper, do you think uh, Dennis will bring uh, John Longmire on for one last hurrah? Well, we hope so, uh, because he deserves it. Blakey front spot, gives it to Motlop, he's kicked a couple. Motlop centering kick, high ball, Carey trying to get into the frame. Can't mm. quite mend in the front spot, Silvani was good to hog. Only a couple of posses for Hoggy, but he's been on the interchange for a lot. I think McKay's been one of the Blues' best. Off one step, quickly to set a half forward. Allen at the back, Whitnell off the ground. It's going to be wide and in the pocket, and it'll be a boundary throw. And as I said earlier, to Whitnell's defence, I said he had a dog of a day earlier. This young kid has really kept running it out, and in the end, he can hold his head pretty high. He's the sort of forward that they can build a team around, Lance Whitnell. He's going to be around for a long time. Johnny Longmire, Anthony Stevens, a couple still on the Kangaroos bench. Jeez, Bellows just kept on working. Archer, Massey, young Chris Massey. Another good education for a young player. Big future in front of him, just 21 games under his belt. Kicks in towards full forward. Pickett lurking at the front, claimed by Lappin. The ball is held and up by Andrew Coates comes in to take charge. In front of a crowd today of 94,000. 228. Wonderful crowd, a wonderful day. Kangaroo fans and supporters will be delighted as they see David King concede a behind. It matters not now with under seven minutes left. Some celebrations have already begun. 
And ironic that the Kangaroos have only had one less, uh, one more scoring shot than the Blues. And the reason they beat uh, Essendon last week is because Essendon was so wasteful today. It's been uh, a little bit the other way. Free kick. Goal, and it's uh, going to come down the ground. Really he really pushed a uh, bum on over. Off the ball, so the ball uh, is so taken. Turnover, and it will mean that Glenn Manton can have a shot. 45 degree angle, some 45 metres out. He adds a behind, and Cameron Moody gets uh, let off, but maybe only for a moment. To the interchange bench, he heads. Still without a touch. And it may be that John Longmire will see it out. No, it's going to be Capuano will come back on. This is Harvey in the back pocket. He's played a fair game too. Brent Harvey's had 19 possessions. Pretty important, Robbo, when they were looking uh, out on their legs. Brent Harvey lifted and he's such a quick player and he was so tenacious in those loose ball circumstances. Shoal not paid the mark. Sure. Sure. He can't believe it either. Jason, how have you viewed uh, the heavyweight battle, Silvani and Carey? Well, I think Silvani's uh, done the job. I mean, at the end of the day, if you look at the influence that Carey's had up forward, you'd say, Soss, you've done a great job for the Carlton Footy Club. Now, Carey, when he went to the midfield, did some very constructive things, and he really created a bit of play. It allowed McKernan to dominate up forward. But you can't take anything away from Soss's performance. He's been one of the Blues' best. The rat and kick partly smothered. David King defends. Away to Harvey, who changes traffic direction and goes to mighty Mick Martin and the Pike on the outer side. Pike can chip over the top. They've got the numbers here, including Allison. Can set up the hand pass and they're on their way. Peter Bell, those little pistons still pumping, goes wide to the outer side and finds a skipper. Suddenly the relief is flooding from the Roo fans. The disappointment of last year all but behind them. Allison, short into the pocket. Motlock, 55 metres out, but he can kick a long ball. Into full forward, Kudafidis, the spoiler from behind, slapped to the boundary line by Hogg, forcing a throw in. Fairly similar to the uh, incident where Mickey Martin uh, was penalised in the, earlier in the match, but uh, the umpire giving Matthew Hogg on that occasion the benefit of the doubt. Boundary throw in, Manton oh. tries to get the hand pass, Bradley, Beaumont, running from the full back line, goes out very wide, it'll fall at the feet here, of Nelson, his hand passes short, gathered by King, very good kick. Just waited nicely. Not high enough for Ratton to get to the uh, contest, and the mark is taken by Welsh, well within scoring range. He's had a great game, David King. Gave them uh, plenty of run through the middle of the ground when they were being challenged early in the game. And it's just continued to uh, play discipline, attacking footy. It was a clever kick because he didn't have a lot of time then. He was about to blaze away and out of the corner of his eye he saw a couple of kangaroo jumpers and he just chipped the ball over. Welsh going for his second goal. Gets very good distance with the kick. Not quite the accuracy. And scores a behind. Scott Welsh, one goal, one. Leading goal kickers for the kangaroos. Shannon Grant kicked four. Early in the game, very important. Peter Bell has kicked four. McKernan three. Motlop a couple after coming off the bench and the Blues no one better than two goals. Bradley good kick all Camparelli one hand Bell inside Motlop really enjoying it now little chip pass to centre half forward Welsh not quite McKay kept his eye on it Manton Hamble back was okay to Massey who is the youngest player out there today Kuda feed his little grub around Mickey got a bad bounce oh. in the second <laughs> He couldn't possibly kick a goal, but wouldn't it be great? Kicks the ball back inside. Carey's okay. got it. Soss can't believe it. Silvani had him wrapped up, but the kick found a way. Ron Casey, the chairman of the North Melbourne Football Club. That's just brilliant. And this great champion, who did in many ways turn the game in an unfamiliar role in the centre square today, has a chance to kick his second goal. Straight in front, takes his time, caresses it through, and he's got two. The Kangaroos lead 124 to 83. The average winning margin, I'll tell you in a minute, 
might just hang on to that one. I think he look, he's making it look so easy there. You've got no idea how hard it is to trap it in the palm of one hand. He didn't hold it in one arm. He caught that in the palm of one hand while using his strength to hold Silvani off on the other side. Average winning margin in grand finals of the 90s is 42 points. And at the moment, the Kangaroos are leading by 41. <laughs> Really, you could come up with I that. don't know whether that's a good one or a bad one, actually. <laughs> that hurts. <laughs> well, maybe Whitnell and co. can close it. Hickmott goes with a hand pass. He wanted Bradley, but he was well covered. Bradley, however, will go again. He tries to scoop it up, scooping it eventually to the line. 94,228 here today. He's kept running Craig Bradley. 35 years of age, he's had... 25 possessions. Yeah, he's been fantastic. Here's Rat into a vacant forward zone. The only one there is King. Hickmott getting back on him late now. The boundary line will beat them both. He might be getting a little bit tired, Jared David King. We spoke yeah. about it earlier and he wasn't all that keen to chase that one either, was he? No, he's just working on petrol fumes yeah. at the moment. <laughs> the juice ran out a long time ago. <laughs> There's Mick Martin slapping it away with the right fist, but only as far as Rat. Caught in a tackle, he's slung. Nelson can't get clear, eventually got the hand pass. It finishes back with Ratton from a standing start. Into Harford, Hamill in front. Takes a strong mark. Had two defeat, he's coming over, his teammate. Hamill stood his ground, and he'll have a shot from directly in front. He's going to try. ruin that average margin on the Bruce, I think. close that average. I'm glad. I'm glad I was... I'd love to see it a little closer. Well, the Blues would have been hoping for a lot more of this during the game. He, he was a very important player in their setup up forward because he can take a good mark and kick goals. Unfortunately, he just hasn't had the opportunities that he would have liked today. He does make the most of that one, however. Hamill gets his first goal and his first goal in a final. It's Carlton's 12. Interesting early too, Sandy, that they... Uh, Initially, when he was messed up with Mick Martin, they tried to drag Mick right up the ground, and I really think Aaron Hamill is much more effective working inside that forward 50 where he can take a mark and kick the goal rather than as a running player coming outside of the 50. Well, Carlton have kicked a fair score in a grand final, 12 goals, 17, but they haven't been able to contain the Kangaroos on the other hand, 19 goals, 10. They're striving to improve their scoreboard. The Blues, Caparelli's kick, not marked there. Lappin couldn't get the crumbs. Still a chance for Hamill. He's well tackled by Archer. He is ferocious, Glenn Archer, in his attack on the football. And he locks it up about 45 metres from the Carlton goal. The fans were teased a little bit up until half-time. The Kangaroos led by 20 points. But by gee, they blew it away in the third term and they kicked six goals to two. And they've gone on with it in this last term. Oh. Chance now for Camparelli. Pickett. It's a free kick to the Kangaroos to be taken by Pickett at half back. One and a half minutes left in the last grand final of the millennium. Byron Pickett with the football and the Kangaroos leading by 35 points. Modlop at half back. He's going to remember this day for a long time, kicking a couple of goals. That one just too far for Shaw. Manton. Oh, nowhere to go. To Ratton, whose influence early was enormous. Short to Beaumont. Again short, Camparelli, one of Carlton's best players. Hamill's the target, doesn't get quite that far. Kutafidis was a good play in the front by the Kangaroos. There's a lot of discussion about just who's been the, the best team of the decade. It's on the west coast of the Kangaroos, but this nearly gets them over the line, Bruce. Gets them very close. They won 11 straight going to last year's grand final. They've won 31 out of their last 37 games, the Kangaroos, since that run. That is an amazing performance. They really have been the benchmark for a long time in the late 90s. There's no question about that. Crystal on the up. Abraham, just a little throw maybe to pick it. Pick it there. Cuda can't get away. Still no ball. They've also won 19 out of their last 21 in this season. They won just one out of their first four games this year, and the Saints had them beaten at the SCG in round five. Remember that at halftime? 
and they picked themselves up from that point on. They've only lost to the Bulldogs and to the, and to the Bombers in 21 matches. It's a remarkable performance by this team. They finished the 20th century as the team to beat in the new millennium. As the time ticks down and the Kangas have won a fourth premiership, well done, Dennis Pagan. You deserve everything you've got today, and so does your club. Tears of a different kind today for John Longmire. Oh. <laughs> Worthy winners, no question about that. Goodbye, 98. This is 99. Look at Mickey Martin. Come on, on this one. Kerry. Tim, what have you got, Tim? Steve, how do you feel? Most fantastic effort. Oh, 98. No, it's been a long year and uh, it's just fantastic after last year. and It's, it's unbelievable. You worked so well, it's so hard to get back into this side. Bloody oath, you know, I had a hard week this week to get back on the track and I'm just so excited to get a game today. You young Mooney, your first grand final, can you tell us a little bit about it? Unbelievable, dude. You cannot believe it. Like I Richard Osborne's in there as well, Ozzy, go your hardest, Dipper's in there, champagne corks are flowing left, right and centre. Also there, and spare a thought for him, Jason McCartney. Yeah. Jason McCartney missed out with suspension. Terrific scenes here, Carey. Really? And Dennis Pagan. What a fantastic coaches. season for you. Had a magnificent day. Yeah, look, the boys played terrific today. I'm just so pleased for players like John Longmire, Winston Abraham, all these guys who have had the chance to taste success. And it's really sweet. It's really sweet, Tim. And Monty Mick Martin just played a terrific game. Yeah, he's terrific, Mickey. He's a terrific player. He always gives his best every week. Very consistent. He's terrific. Yes. Oh, in you go. It's a great feeling so, down here. For Dennis Pagan. Well, second premiership. So Rob Parassi and Dennis Pagan have now won the four. And for David Parkin in his sixth grand final as a coach, he knows what it's like to win. He also knows what it's like to lose. We're going to take a short break. We'll be back with the Premiership medals, the Norm Smith medal for the best on the ground, and also the Premiership Cup. So don't go away. It was the year of the kangaroo in the end. It was 19 goals, 10 over the Blues, 12 goals, 17. Welcome back to the MCG. Let's join Craig Willis. The master ceremonies for the presentations after the 1999 Grand Final. Ladies and gentlemen, prior to the presentation to the Kangaroos Football Club, would you show your appreciation for the efforts of Carlton here today in the grand final? They finished sixth after the home and away season. They made it through to the grand final, and there is certainly nothing 
to say there is any disgrace to be runners up to a team of the calibre of the Kangaroos. I'd like you now to please to welcome former Essendon champion and a former winner of the Norm Smith medal, Simon Madden, to present the Norm Smith medal to the player adjudged best of field in the 1999 Coca-Cola AFL Grand Final. And the Norm Smith medalist for 1999 is Shannon Grant. God, where do I begin? This is just fantastic, isn't it? I mean, these boys over here, they were just fantastic all year. They did everything today. And you know, to be played with a bunch of guys like this is just fantastic. And I'll tell you what, we'll be celebrating long and hard into the night. Thank you. Thank you. Grant, for Would you now please welcome former South Melbourne champion, a Hall of Fame legend, and triple Brownlow medalist, Bob Skilton, who will join with Simon to present medallions to each player of the winning team as we present the premiers of 1999. Ladies and gentlemen, starting with number four, Michael Martin. Number six, Shannon Grant. Number seven, Adam Simpson. Number 10, Number 10, Anthony, Anthony Stevens. Stevens. Number 11, Number 11 Glenn, Glenn Archer. Archer. Number 12, in his 299th game, John Blakey. Number 13, Martin Pike. Number 15, Winston Abraham. Number 16, Matthew Capuano. Number 19, Cameron Mooney. Number 23, Shane Clayton. Number 24, Craig Soule. Number 26, and celebrating his 100th game, Peter Bell. Number 28, Byron Pickett. Number 29, Brent Harvey. Number 30, Scott Welsh. Number 31, Corey McKernan. Number 33, Brett Allison. Number 34, David King. Number 35, in game number 200, John Longmire. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the coach of the Kangaroos, Dennis Pagan. And with him, the captain, of course, Wayne Carey, number 18. And now, I'd like to call upon Bob Skilden to present the Kangaroos with the 1999 Coca-Cola AFL Premiership Cup to Wayne Carey and Dennis Pagan. Just on uh, behalf of all the boys, I'd like to thank all the uh, kangaroo supporters that come out today and supported us. <laughs> um, I'd just like to say 
there was a lot of unlucky guys that uh, didn't play in this side. One because of suspension. Another guy, Robert Scott, who was very unlucky to miss out. And I'd just like to pass on that all the guys that played this year are a part of this, and it takes a whole club to win one of these. And uh, just like to congratulate them. Thank you. Wayne Carey, the captain there of the Kangaroos. So in the end, it was the favourites who prevailed. The Kangaroos have won 19 out of their last 21 matches. What a season it's been. Thank you for being with us for the MCG.